sure about that. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> sure. What? Please call the street. Get it on. New computer, man. Please call the roll. Alderman Conway. Alderman Ortman. Present. Alderman Moore. Alderman French. Alderman Carter. Present. Alderman Tyus. Alderman Murphy. Here. Alderman Coder. Here. Alderman Spencer. Present. Chairman Bosley. Present. We have six present. We have a quorum. Do <coughs> you want me to get him? Is Moore here? Yeah. He's here. <coughs> we'll, we'll, we'll just take on we'll, the ladies are first. We'll get okay. Miss Davis says she's. Marlene okay. Davis is she? Just, she's not she not hasn't made it. Okay. Okay. So we'll do more. Yeah, Moore has there. three bills. We'll do him. <coughs> Next. I think he'll be here in just a second. All right. Well, while we're waiting on him, how about the kids on the committee? I'm ready, though, Mr. Chairman. You are. Yeah, we are. We got a lot of high-paid people there? here. Yes, Sam is on his way. Oh, well, we'll do you first. You know, okay. do okay. me on. Okay. So, floor bill 285. <clears throat> this totally makes sense so we can get all these high-dollar city employees back to work. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, first of all, it's Board Bill 285, and it's a grant that BPS has applied for. And but I'd like to have everyone that's here stand up, supporting the bill, the city employees, and introduce yourself and where you're from. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> Go ahead, Michael. I'm Jamie Nelson from City Traffic. I'm Jamie Nelson from City Traffic. I'm Brent Five, Lieutenant with the Police Department. Captain Angel from the City. John Toler, Board of Public Service. And we have two more officers here running around somewhere too, two sergeants. So, um, but anyway, what? Are running this board. They know what? Okay, they're walking fast. Uh, Thank you. Um, what I'm going to do is turn it over to John so he can explain the the, the details um, to start out that way, and then if there's any questions, we you know we've got all kinds of, or we'll find the answer to it. So, Thank you're you on. Thank you very much. Morning. Every year, East-West Gateway Council of Governments solicits federally funded applications to attempt to acquire funding to do various types of transportation projects. This project involves the funding pot called Congestion Mitigation Air Quality. The projects are primarily to reduce the amount of emissions, uh, to improve traffic flow, and improve our city's air quality. This particular project was a partnership with several city entities. Uh, the police department is providing the <coughs> bulk of the lion's share of the 20% local match funding. Police are providing 500,000 to support the project. We also have a partnership with Downtown STL. They will be providing $250,000 toward the project and Laclede Gas, $10,000 toward the project. The total cost is $3.8 million for the design and the construction. The design is slated to start in this current year and construction in the year 17. I did bring Jamie Wilson uh, with the street department who's very familiar with the details of the project and I asked him to provide a summary of the uh, different components of this CMAC job. Jamie? Thank you. you can come sit here if okay. you want. <coughs> hot seat. This is the hot seat. All right. <laughs> this project, like, like uh, John said, is a part of the CMEC process, so there's basically three components uh, this project simplified in. The first being a fiber optic expansion of our existing network. We have a lot of, as everybody knows, we have a lot of fiber in the ground. When it was originally installed, there was only enough money to put on, to activate enough fiber to run what we had, not to open up for its full capacity. So this project comes through, opens up 
that, uh, that capacity that we had, that untapped capacity, and also allows us to design for a lot of um, traffic monitoring cameras to be installed on the end devices. Uh, the second component is a downtown circulation study, um, one of which a short-term recommendation, and this is all on the, the basis of we had a lot happen since the city's been looked at last from a retiming perspective, maybe 10 years ago. Um, we've had the arch grounds completed, the new bridge, a lot of different stuff downtown that's changed our circulation, our volumes, much less our patterns. So this study will take a look at that uh, and provide recommendations for improved flow, one of the which the short-term recommendation will be implementable timing plans, so we have new timing plans installed under this project. Uh, we'll also have a basis for long-term recommendations, which we can use uh, this study as a basis for future grants um, for improving our transportation network. The third component will be uh, sort of a model like MoDOT has, where they, they have a consultant staff on a two, three year basis come in and uh, augment their staff on, on their TMC, their traffic management center. The city's traffic management center, we're going to have them come in and provide services where they'll be able to monitor our cameras for us. They'll work on our arterials on a day to day basis and serve as an extension of our staff uh, for those purposes on a three year basis. So again, the first component being fiber optic and a, a video camera expansion. The second being the downtown circulation study and retiming. And the third component being the, the, uh, the traffic management center staffing. In a nutshell, that's what the project is. <clears throat> well, where are they getting this $780,000 from? Well, here I can. It's it's seven seven hundred sixty thousand. Five hundred thousand is coming from the police department. Two years of two fifty and two fifty, and then um, it'll be added to their budget by the director of operations. He'll make sure that it's put into the budget, you know, and they'll they'll know it. Well, we don't have this. We don't have the grant yet. We don't have the grant yet. That's why we're applying for this and going through the process so we can get the grant. So, and then downtown St. Louis is 250,000, uh, or STL Inc., and then the Lee Group is, is 10,000. Okay, good. I might just make a comment on the grant. The city has received approval of the grant. What this board bill allows this Board of Public Service to do is enter into various contracts to process the grant. It allows us to hire a designer. It allows us to enter into an agreement with MoDOT to run the project. It agrees to or gives BPS authority to bid the project and enter into construction contract for the project. But John, what he was asking is the matching money. Where was it coming from? Correct. So that's what I was trying to answer. The, the money is not all in place, but it's identified in this bill where it will ultimately be coming from. Well, how do we spend money before we get it? Well, we will not be able to enter into these agreements that involve money until we have the monies in place. Well, why are you asking for the money before you get it? Well, with the board That's bill language the just allows BPS to eventually enter into those contracts that involve money through the processes of the Board of Public Service. And the bill just identifies where that money will be coming from. But what if you don't get it? Well, we, you see, this board bill says this is what we're going to do. But now how do you obligate money that you don't have for a purpose that has not occurred yet. The bill doesn't involve the obligation of money, just the authority to proceed with entering those contracts to execute the project. Yeah, but, but what if you don't get the money? Then what? If, if the city were not able to acquire the local match, the city would be forced to give the project back to East West Gateway Authority for distribution amongst the five Missouri counties. Yeah, well that doesn't say that here. What it looks like that this is an ordinance that commits uh, this kind of money uh, to be spent. And for whatever reason, 
this amount of money, $760,000 doesn't come to the table, then you're going to have to get the money from someplace because this obligates the city. It's just, like. it's just like any other grant that we apply for that requires matching money. So, if we don't get the matching money, we don't get the grant. Yeah, we don't get the... the but that doesn't say that here. That doesn't say if we don't get it, if they don't get it, we <clears throat> don't give it. Well, what this says is that they can actually, it, it, it gives them the authority uh, to, to proceed with the contracts uh, to try to implement it, but still we have to get our matching part or we have to give the money back to East West Gateway, right? Sure. Right. Right. So okay. I'm sure that? I'm sure we'll find the money somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if, if it's not there. I mean, it's, two on my gas tax. we don't want to give $3 million back. So as part of the application process, oh, okay. when we submit, uh, for the parties that are providing the local match, we require that those parties give us a written commitment letter specifying how much funds they are applying to the project. So we have a commitment letter from the police department. Well, that's not here. Well, that's, I was just describing the background of the application. Well, we're not allowed to see that letter? Well, you certainly can see it, yeah. Well, I think you should have submitted it, but we'll write off. Here's, here's a copy. I only have one. It's going to be added to their budget for the next two years. It's oh, two hundred fifty thousand a get year. It from us. We'll uh, get it from general uh, revenue into their budget. Yeah. And They're going to cut our wards short in order to be able to get that kind of money. In order to be able to give it up for this project. Well, I don't know about cutting the wards short, but it's well worth getting the three million dollars that you know that, that the five hundred thousand or two hundred fifty thousand a year. You know, it's well worth getting the three million. And the other thing that this is going to do is, for us that are working on putting cameras up, you know, it's when they add <coughs> the fiber, the new fiber that'll come out out of this grant. It's going to en enable us to to be able to put cameras up in intersections that might be uh, might not have fiber now. Who is us? What camera? Us, the aldermen. The us, the cameras the the cameras are driven. Uh, by us if we like Antonio was actually the pioneer the first alderman to go with cameras um, and there's several of us right now that are that are looking at, at putting uh, cameras into the uh, system is that what you'd call it and then they would be monitored by real-time policing and this this project will it's, it's not specified in the grant because at this point it's just the grant to get the funds once this gets to design we're going to look on citywide. It's defined as far as downtown, every major arterial from a traffic perspective where we want to do this. Downtown, every major arterial we identified, Hampton, McCausland, Kings Highway, Grand, Jefferson, Forest Park, everything, named all the critical corridors and the downtown area, plus any others that are of a critical nature for traffic monitoring. During the design process, we'll get to the point where we actually look from a strategic perspective, from a traffic perspective where, where it is, from a security perspective, from, from all those, where can we get the, the best bang for our, for our federal dollars here and place these? And while we do place those cameras in those locations, we're also, like I said, opening up the pathway from that fiber perspective for future, for future uh, devices to be hooked onto it without having to go through the effort of opening that pathway themselves. Yes. <laughs> no, I just didn't know if, if that was to. You didn't know what I was going to ask these all along. He gets the, he's the chair. Do. He gets to ask first if he wants to. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. oh, me. Oh, that's right. You, know, you can ask first, first always. Uh, oh, Conway's not here today. All my Norton. Just, just pass me. I'm on the other end. More? Yes, sir. I noticed that you named off a lot of major thoroughfares, but you didn't name not one on the right, north side. Right we are included, right? Right. Kings Highway, Grant, every, it's part the full extent of them. Every major arterial. And this $250,000 per year, is that coming, do you have to go to Ways and Means to get that money? It 
It's my understanding that she's just going to um, request it from the Capital Committee for the department budget. <coughs> So uh, when we're doing the budget, you, you guys want to ask for an additional five hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars a year for the police department? Yes, sir. That's hard to do. That's very hard to do because we got money going to the police department constantly. We feel like I feel like they, they get enough money. So to take an ask and, and then imaginarily, or to think that we're going to just up and give two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year to the police department. I, I think we need to do better than that to try to find another source because it's hard getting blood out of the turnip. And this city continues to bleed and continue to say that they're broke. And I don't understand. Look like we would go to Ways and Means and ask Ways and Means, what is, the, is it possible that you can get this kind of money before we do this budget here? You know, and it's about, if it's about the cameras, I need cameras yesterday. And I'm where they're working on cameras, and I still don't feel like I'm getting a sufficient amount of cameras for the money that I'm putting in. I examined another uh, camera program, and I thought it was way out. It was above mine. It was so 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 far above mine. It was crazy, and with less money. So, I want to make sure that we get the equal share throughout the community. But I don't think that that. Uh, Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That five hundred thousand dollars is going to be easy to get from ways and means. If, that, if that's the route we're taking, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Don't evict him. That's still his chair. I got you, kid. Thank you. My, <laughs> See, got my other stuff down right, there. Right. These people that don't mind. I think Alderman's war is done. Yes, sir. So do we um, have um, an idea where we will be extending new um, fiber? I know that you named off a few streets, but is that definite? There's nothing definite from the grant process. That This gets us to design where the, the right people are in the room to decide where we put these cameras, where we put the, from a traffic perspective. And, and once once the endpoints are defined, then you define, then you look at the pathways to them. Okay. At this point, we, from a, from a, getting the federal money it's just defined as far as the downtown area and critical arterials named plus any others from a that may be just a standalone but yet a critical intersection related right. to traffic so, so it's not defined at this point okay but but one of the main focuses may be downtown and that's why they're putting in uh, a large sum of money is that the case or the partnership is putting in 250,000 250, right um, hmm. Okay, that is all that I have for now. But are we uh, are we gonna get a second round of questioning? Oh, we're gonna have as many questions. As <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, I may have some in a, in a second, but I'm I'm done for now. Well, well that's all right. Well, will you get a chance to ask all the questions you want? Will yes, everybody sir. Everybody else get a chance to you get you can ask it back because your constituents are not gonna call him. Right. <laughs> They're gonna call you. Right. And if you voted for it, then you're going to have an answer. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All Coleman right. Carter, who's in that? Caius. Um, so I have some questions. The first one is that I see this as phase three. What were the first two phases? First two phases were on a much smaller scale than this traffic enhancements to some of our corridors and involved a lot of equipment upgrades as far as traffic signal controllers. Uh, vehicle detection, like the, the small pups you see in the ground at the intersections that detect the presence of traffic, so they get their turn in traffic if that's there. Otherwise, if that, that component's not there, the signal has to cycle around to that side street out so of default. So can you, oh, so I'm sorry, go ahead. No, and then uh, development of signal timing plans in some of these corridors, uh, special event timing for some of the major venues, those type of things. So we've gone through, um, well, there's 20 years of CMAC projects um, the last several have been called traffic enhancements. Phase one, but I'm just, two I, this. right. I'm just talking about the ones where you have. So a that's phase the build-up to this, right, yeah. Right. yeah. So then you have a specific handout you could, or you could put together for me, where you can tell me what was done in phase one and sure. where, and what was done in phase two and where. Absolutely. And I'd like to request that, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. 
I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm requesting. He said there are two other phases. I want to know where they were done, <coughs> what was done, phase okay. one and phase two. Can sure. you get that? And how, yes. Would that take a long time to put together? No, that would not. Like, could I get it like by Friday or Monday or Tuesday or something like that? <laughs> Friday tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. Okay. Make <laughs> <laughs> sure we're talking the same Friday. <laughs> he said he's going to yes. get it for us. So, because this is phase three. So I want to know what they did in phase one and phase two. Sure. Okay. Now to, to speak specifically to what Alderman Carter said about and, and Alderman Moore about the cameras. So you know we had another thing where we brought people in and one of the things that we were outraged about is mm -hmm. that there were three cameras in North St. Louis. Um, and in having the discussion also is that Alderman um, French's cameras had no longer were engaged because it was costing money or what. I, <coughs> I still couldn't get the gist of all but his cameras are no longer working because they didn't pay the money to have them reconnected. Okay, can you do you know anything about that? Uh, Mike, you want to speak more on the history of? I'm from a traffic perspective, from I'm the video camera perspective. Okay, but this is part of it. So right? No, 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 I agree. Right. I agree. Because three I cameras in North St. Louis right is answer. not okay. Mike, Mike is behind you. He could probably answer that a little bit better. Yes, yeah, so I'm Mike Bertolini from from traffic. We spoke at that meeting. Correct. Since that point in time. Uh, can Mike come over here so we can see you instead of talking <laughs> behind us? Right. <laughs> I was trying to be nice. I just, um, I, I like to look at me too. <laughs> so since the last time we talked. Uh, like introduce yourself. Sure. Mike Bertolini from City Traffic. Okay. Uh, since the last time we talked, Alderman French's cameras have been converted to the software that matches the city and he is engaged in the process of bringing his camera system back up. Uh, that camera system has been integrated into the police department and they, are ha they have the ability to view them at this time. Uh, it's been an ongoing process. Uh, the camera system is one of the original ones and as technology improves, some of that equipment is old and he is, again is in the process of replacing some of that equipment. So, did he have to pay for this integration, or did we? I'm not sure who paid for what. I know out of our pockets, we paid nothing. My understanding is it comes from capital. Ward, Ward capital. Okay, um, but you're not sure, so I'll be checking with Alderman um, to find out specifically if he paid it or something else. And. So, uh, and these cameras uh, yeah, is of our particular concern to me because as we talked about for this project, do we have a map of where we're talking about doing this at all, Alderman no. Gordon? No. Could we, how, why don't we have, with our mapping capability, why don't we have a map of where work phase three would be the streets or whatever? We do have a map, from, Jamie. The map is a little more specific to the uh, the study itself, which was focused downtown and the retiming efforts. Mm -hmm. We don't have a map of where the cameras are envisioned because we haven't defined where they are. I mean, I guess <coughs> in general we could highlight a lot of our arterials, but it's going to again be the arterials downtown. It's going to basically look that's like lit up, like all the arterials are going to be lit up. It looks downtown. like that because that's where they we put all the got cameras. To the, we haven't got to where they're going to be yet to have a map, unfortunately. It looks like that because that's where they put all the Are cameras. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> See, that was that's uh, Mr. Alderman Moore's, Carter's, and I know my concern is from already to me. When you come in here after what you all presented to mm -hmm. us before, you better come in here if you want my vote showing me. <coughs> how you going to bring my community up to speed, okay? So if you're not bringing that up to speed, why am I supporting this? If you're saying, well, we just really don't have it here, and, and it's going to look like downtown, because when it looks quacks like a duck, it is a duck, okay? So I'm hearing the reason why downtown is paying for it is because they're going to get all the cameras. And so why don't they just pay for the whole thing? They got uh, they they're, not, get, they're not, they will not be getting all the cameras, again, it's a, well, okay. They, they did put in, they, obviously they did put in money. Okay, so when money. North St. Louis, let me make myself clear. When North St. Louis only have three, they're getting all the cameras, okay? Now, that's like you saying you got a billion dollars and I got a penny, but I, you don't have all the money. You have all the money. So North St. Louis having three is we're not getting our fair share of cameras, okay? So you men, you don't need to get into that argument because you will not win it. Um... So can you give me a list of uh, the, the, you said Grand, is this the, so it's going to be Grand, 
Kings Highway. Uh, what else? What are the other quarters? Now that, that that's the study limits for, for traffic purposes where we're going to retime and have our recommendations based on the Arch Grounds project, the new river bridge. That's one component of the three of this project. Mm -hmm. The first component being the fiber and camera. We don't have a map for that because it hasn't been defined through the, okay. through the design process where it's going to be. Otherwise, I'd have a whole, it looked like a whole city at this point because I don't know where it is. To the real time. <coughs> right, I understand. And so this real time intelligence center is going down here on what is this? Uh, Olive, Olive and what? At the police station. Oh, it's going to be at the police station. It's, it's, it's there now. Yeah. Okay. And for the grant process, relative to your question about where the camera is going to go, it's defined in general, but at least in the downtown area of the Central Business District, in Causland, Skinker, and these are full lengths of these corridors. Hampton, Kings Highway, Van Aventer, Grand. Okay, I don't want to write all that. Okay, well, I'm okay. just saying the full, my point is the full extent of where Okay, they go, so is there something you can map. give to me where I can read it and I can hold you accountable for when it doesn't happen? Uh, so can, is, can, can I have a copy of that right there that you're reading from? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. And just to clarify, the real-time crime mm -hmm. center is already uh, okay. in existence, but, but the traffic wait, operations wait. center would Who be just a section copy? of wait, that. Wait. Give it to our clerk. I'm sorry, I didn't hear yeah, you. Yeah, the real-time crime center is already at 1915 Olive on the sixth floor. Mm -hmm. um, the traffic operations center that they're talking about, the about is just a small section of that center. So the, the real-time crime center is already there. What are these? Okay, so um, this is just a small portion of what you were already doing in, in, the, in the first place, yes. is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Um, I want to go back to what the alderman, um, the, the chair was saying about the monies, okay? Um, I kind of agree with what he said uh, right on point is that we're basically uh, saying that we're going to apply for this and we're going to get this money, um, but if we don't, we're going get to get, have to give this money back. And I have never known when we applied for any kind of grant that we then said, okay, we'll just give the money back. So we basically are committing the money, okay? I, I, I've been down here 21 years on and off, and I just haven't known that. I don't know, maybe... You've been no, here. The only person that's sitting here that's been here longer than me is you and you, okay? By, by a couple months. Six months. <laughs> that's, he was our senior by six months. <laughs> but I don't know, maybe you, Alderman Conway, do you remember us ever giving any money back? <laughs> I would hope that we did. <laughs> okay, right, okay. So, and he's right in that we really are committing the money. We're playing semantics. Uh, when we say that, we are really kind of doing it, and, 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 and we should not give money back if we can get it. I'm not saying we should give grant money back. I'm just saying don't act like, oh, well, we just will give it back, because I just don't know of any time that we ever have, and nor would I want to if I was getting the money. Um, to his point, and I don't know if he wants this or he may not want this, why is it that when we write these board bills that we don't have something in here that says so that he wouldn't have this question that if, uh, and maybe it's, you feel like it's just redundant, that if the money is not uh, awarded to the police department or any of these entities, that the, the, then um, it just reverts back. Is there a reason why we don't, we don't have some kind of clause like that in there, a reversion clause about the money? Well, we require a very strong written commitment, and we rely on that commitment. So you are then, it, what you're saying is we're, committing the money, okay? So what Freeman is we, saying is right. Does the city have every intention in going through with the completion of the project based on those strong written financial commitments from any party that provides that? <clears throat> I don't have any further questions right now. I do have, an, I want to format another question that I have. I want to go through and make sure I'm ready. I have a few questions at this time. Thank you, sir. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Spencer? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, the funding for the phase one and phase two, I, I might have missed that. Where was the funding for those two phases coming from? Do we? I don't recall what the 20% matches came from. I believe primarily from the street department. Do we know about how much those two phases cost? I mean, that is part of the information I can get. Good I, question. I just don't remember. Okay. Um, they do, I can say relative order of magnitude, they were smaller than, yeah. than this project, absolutely. This one's okay. 3.8, I would guess. And again, I'll look. 
they're in the one, one and a half to two million range typically. I agree with that. Less than two. And did those uh, funds come through this board? Yes. They did. Every federally funded transportation improvement funded. program okay. project follows a similar process where this board of aldermen and various referred committee would uh, uh, allow or require the Board of Public Service administer the process. Okay. Um, so the f funding, if I understand, our police department is funded through general revenue, correct? Yes. So then if I'm understanding correctly, then we would be funding the police department and essentially that 500000 to then be allocated from the police department. I'm just confused why the money would go from general revenue to the police department to this project rather than going from general revenue to the project since the police department doesn't have income streams to my knowledge other than general revenue. And I should just, I'm just curious why we're pushing it through the police department. Well, normally on something like this, if it's, if, yeah. if it's a grant application, whether we have to pay it back or not, it actually doesn't come through. You see it as a separate item in the budget book on the capital allocations. But the first 15 pages of your budget book talks about all the special accounts, where the funds are going and where they're allocated. But it's still coming out of revenue. Well, hey. it's specified here as coming from the police department and the ordinance. But my thought or my understanding is that the police department's budget is coming from general revenue. Right, but if they're doing the grant application and, and correct me, John, and I'm sorry I'm late, but if they did the grant application and the funding comes in as a grant, it'll come in as, as a special account number, not necessarily general revenue. And, you know, Paul Bean normally will set that up. I, I don't have a budget book in front of me, but most of the things that come through as grants come through as a description at the front of the uh, of the book. Now, and within the book, they'll they'll will have an account like in the eleven hundreds that'll say transfers are grants, transfers in, transfers out, depending on how we have to classify it. Okay. Um, it'll go as a separate item, but within the police department and all the departments, we'll have transfers in, grants, grants in, grants out. Okay. So in a timeline sense, um, if the police department is committing $250,000 every, for the for a two consecutive years, um, how does this follow with the timeline of the project? If we're awarded the, the grant, then um, do we need to front the money, so to speak? Or, I mean, is this, is this an ongoing project over a couple of years that we're contributing over a couple of years, or? Well, Currently, we have enough funds from downtown partnership to start the design process in this current calendar fiscal calendar year. So 2016, we would like to enter into the design and take about a year to design. So we are looking for construction funding from the police department to provide enough local mass so that we can bid and begin construction. We cannot bid until we have all the funding in process. I in got place. You. So <clears throat> by July of next year, which is the start of fiscal year 17, we could potentially have the entire city police department funding in place to build in late 2017. But again, the police department funding is just coming from general revenue. Uh, maybe I'm totally missing. Right, they may transfer that out to a, to a, an, an account because the grant's got to drop into an account that we set up for it. It will not drop into the police right. department right. budgets. Um, so you would have a transfer out of whatever that amount is, if, if it's two hundred and fifty thousand, almost kind of like when you do a ward wide capital, you do a ward capital mm -hmm. improvement, and you're doing where you have to put in the 20% match, that comes out, goes in, and then they pay that. They collect in the money and they pay out through a separate account number. Ultimately, there would be a specific project line item account set up by the controller mm -hmm. through the police department that we would identify that monies could be drawn from as a project progresses. Sure, but at, to Alderman Moore's point, the police department is strapped for cash. I mean, we, you know, so I'm just 
you know, is this going to have any negative effects on our police department? Uh, you know, taking two hundred fifty thousand dollars out of their budget, or I understand it's you. We're going to allocate new funding. I just don't. It's it's confusing to me why we're pushing it through the police department, regardless of the explanation. I, I just continue to be a little confused by that. Yeah, what will we do it with the other? <coughs> 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 the phase one and two. Right. Yeah. Well, the the the, tra the the grant, you know, was for the real time policing for traffic flow, mm -hmm. which is going to go through the police department. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Todd Walterman isn't here, but my understanding was that you know uh, they're going to make sure that two hundred fifty thousand gets that line item in the budget for the matching funds. Now, will it be with their budget? I can't answer that. I don't know, but you know they're going to find the money somewhere and make sure that. The police department has got their matching funds for two years. That's the way it was explained to me. So, um, you know, the the funds will eventually be there, and, and I don't know where you know the that Paul Payne or you know where they'll find the matching funds, but it could be uh, the capital pot. I mean, it, it you know it could be matching funds that they get somewhere else, but it's going to end up being identified uh, you know in a line item through the police because that's you know where the where the grant actually with the sure. street department is that's what we're working on so does the traffic flow and the emissions that's why we're we're actually getting this and then that's why I brought up cameras before too you know there's some cameras that are going to go up but it'll also enable you know some of the wards to actually put cameras up at intersections you know where they want to that's a little bit more feasible than us trying to run our own fiber I was going to give a quick example how this relates to many of the argument and projects that they funded through the war capital program. When Board of Public Service submits a transportation project that's funded with half cent war capital, we require a letter of commitment for the aldermen identifying how much money per fiscal year that they're going to provide toward the project. They don't need to come up with it at the time that we submitted the application, mm -hmm. but they do need to come up with the total amount before we bid the project. And that's a very good comparison with the police department. They're functioning the same way that aldermen fund their transportation improvement programs, projects. Well, I, I think that pretty much ends the questions I had. I want to echo Alderman Moore's point, too, that the cameras for the bids for me were quite expensive and outside of my ability to pay for with my ward capital at this time. And so I appreciate the, you know, I, I, I just don't know how I'm going to be able to come up with the funds to be able to utilize the system at this time. I, um, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chris. I, I Go defer ahead. to you. But, well, my question is, um, do we have an estimate of how many cameras we gonna put up with this? For the base? Huh? Well, it's no, it's partially uh, cameras. Yes, it is. It's partially cameras. It's part of the. It's, it's part of the grant the, for the purpose of defining an amount to, to be awarded for this grant. We defined approximately 200 cameras. Again, the locations weren't picked, but we know what, what cameras would typically cost for the purpose of estimating okay. for budgetary purposes. So no, about no, 200 cameras so. to, be, mm -hmm. to be dispersed on basically anywhere that serves from a traffic perspective and benefit the, the city of St. Louis. And for the purpose of the grant, we actually defined, again, downtown and all our major arterials to give them an idea of the type of range that we're applying this to the city of St. Louis. But again, for the purpose of the grant, about 200 camera locations. Mr. <coughs> Chairman. Yeah. I've been a good I, I've been a good guy. I, I, I've, I've been patient. I've been trying to get cameras since 2007. And I wish these guys would have pulled me to the side and, and before this guy. You're talking about 200 cameras. Do you know where they're going to be placed? Will it help my ward? Because I'm only getting six cameras. <coughs> I'm, I'm sorry, sir. No problem, Chris. You know, you, you, you're new to the game. <laughs> I'm only getting six cameras for $200,000. Well, 
And I looked at one of my colleagues' cameras, and it looked like he had maybe five times more cameras than I'm getting. And I want to know if this grant, you got 200 cameras in this scheme of things, right? Will any of them go north? Oh, absolutely. They're going to go. They're going to go everywhere. Are they not? Can you have a map to locate them, all 200 of them, where they go? I can't, and again, this map, just for everyone's purposes, because this is a little convoluted in the sense that there's three components, and this map re represents one again. This is the downtown circulation study limits, the retiming efforts, so that's that's focused, focused down there. I like Jack Cola, but and he's about downtown, and I'm not trying to knock you off, Jack, but I had to defend for myself for the forgotten people under four. I understand and, all that. Right. I would, I would and, point out that downtown St. Louis, Inc. is submitting com Contributing two hundred fifty thousand dollars towards the matching. I've funds. contributed two hundred thousand for my poor little ward that, that cannot afford it. We need anything. I could have spent that on trash cans. But what I'm saying is, I want to know where the cameras are. I'm trying to be the best that I can be, and understand this. But I still need to know where the cameras are going to go so that I can tell my constituents that besides the six cameras that I bought for two hundred thousand. I'm going to get two more in this in my ward because we we voted for this bill. I need to know where the cameras are because I don't care about anything else but the fourth ward. Basically, that's who I care about. Now my colleagues handle their part of it, and I handle the fourth ward, and and I feel slighted since and you know especially when my one of my colleagues came in and got the cameras. I've been downtown several times in the police department, saw the real time cameras. And look like the cameras will be put where they're needed. I have more crime than the whole war combined with 150 churches, 22 liquor stores, 41 stores that sell drugs out of them. All the crime where the young lady's been getting killed and murdered. Look like I, the 200 cameras. I need the 200 cameras in my ward. Can you help me? Here, here's what this is for, though, and I can answer that. This. The, the grant's going to cover traffic enhancement emissions. That's what the grant's for. The cameras that we'll be putting up will be choosing intersections, you know, to cover more of the crime that we have in our wards. So, how many cameras? These, do you get these are this? these are put up. These are going to be put up to control traffic. That's what the grant is for. Now, the benefit to us is any fiber that gets run you know, then it'll be less expensive for us to add a camera in a, at an intersection that's got fiber, and you know that, you've been in the same meetings I've been in, you know, than us having to try to run fiber somewhere. These so, cameras are strictly to control traffic? This is a, it's a traffic grant, that's what we got. So I, we would not be sitting here today to discuss the money uh, if this was, a, this was not a traffic grant. This is not a security. We couldn't have, we wouldn't have been awarded the money if it was a security project. So what's the difference in the cameras we already we've taken down and the ones we're putting up? Well, the ones we're going to put up for a traffic perspective, <clears throat> we're going to sit during the design process and say, yeah, I got I got a big traffic concern at this intersection. Where also does it does it benefit the city of St. Louis from even a, a security perspective to move it a block over where it's also where it's also needed and still achieve our purpose for traffic perspectives. So we're trying to do the most we can with what we're getting through the traffic project. We're stretching this beyond the traffic uh, application for this. We're trying to do more with more with less is basically what we're trying to do. I'm never going to get a security grant that'll pay us 80 <clears> percent <throat> federal money and a 20 percent match for security. I will get that for traffic, so I'm going to try to stretch that as far as I can for the city of St. Louis. So the grant you receive is going to be extra money besides the general revenue. So you're going to solicit the grant and have some additional money for the police department, right? So we were awarded this for $3.8 million. Mm -hmm. The $750,000 is 20% of that, and that's that 20% match is, is downtown STL, police, and clean gas. The other 80% is paid by the, by the federal government. You're killing me with downtown. You're breaking my heart. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. I'm confused. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so, and I understand that the police, that this is uh, part of the policing, would that
there have been a problem if we ran this still through, uh, sorry, if we ran this through the street department, would, even though we're applying, the, is there some kind of and, accounting problem? And, That's what I'm and taking a step back, this project was conceived as our traffic operations center, which is currently located in the Hampton and 44 area. Right. We're taking a lot of the guts from there and putting it in with some of the stuff that we've already put in side by side in the real time crime center. So that's how this project, the real-time crime center, uh, the traffic perspective was conceived. So it's downtown, so we focused the downtown study, the retiming, we're adding a lot more fiber, open up the fiber and the cameras. That's how this, how this was first conceived, and that's how, that's how the partnership with the police and downtown SDL and the clean gas, that's how this all originated. And so just as a backdrop for this. You just knew here, so this is my problem, okay? And um, you have not convinced me. I'm probably not going to vote for this. Um, because since I've been here in 91, I've been, all kind of things get conceived metro link. We'll do the central corner downtown first, and then we'll get back to the north and south St. Louis. But we will get back to you. Hmm. They don't get back to us, okay? We're going to do this, this, and this first. It always is downtown and the central quarter, and they always are going to get back to north and south St. Louis, and they never do, okay? So when you bring this in here like this, I would prefer it be in Hampton, all in south St. Louis. So hear me, the people from south St. Louis. Then everything goes to uh, a downtown in the central quarter, and we always think that they're the most important people in the world. They are not. Downtown, we are trying to create We've been, for years now, we created this uh, place to live downtown at the expense of the neighborhoods that were already here. I've been saying this for years. I never heard of we create a new neighborhood and forget the neighborhoods that are in place. So all of this now, you're saying, well, we created, we're going to put this with the police. I just haven't got enough information. It might be good, and maybe I'm not, not understanding something. Maybe I need to take a tour of what they're doing. Um, I'm, I'm just serious. At, at this I point, I would strongly suggest right. taking I'm, a I'm, tour. I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, but very we've interesting. Yeah, <laughs> okay, but I'm just, but yeah, okay, but you, but but I'm just telling you why it, you, because a lot of times people tell you because they already they keep making a path that this is the only way it can be done, and that's not true. So I was here. When, the, when we were doing streets, so just to make it, under, I've been on streets for a long time. They, oh, we have to do all these uh, overpasses and stuff. We have to do all these bridges. And they weren't doing any in North St. Louis. You know how the one at Union got done? Joanne Wayne uh, shut it down, and that was the only way it got done. And then, uh, mysteriously, <coughs> we could do it. Um, we were doing the traffic patterns for the lights, uh, to synchronize the lights and things like that. And jo a good thing, Joanne Wayne was a senior older person, so I'm going way back. And she made them have to do, that's why Natural Bridge is done. That's why I'm trying to think where else we did. But whatever, the, you know, I'm going back now. It's parts of North Grand. So it has always been this thing of we can't do it because the people who are making these decisions don't live in North St. Louis for sure. Um, never have. The street commission never came from North St. Louis. That I can, maybe back when 1910 or when, when it was an Irish. And so uh, when people only have a perspective of where they come from and they don't even care about your community or don't know about it, then it they make it sound like this is a great way to do it, but that just isn't true. So I have not been convinced that this is the only way. You're saying you're gutting Hampton. Why did you have to gut Hampton? Why couldn't you leave it there at Hampton? And, and conceived, the, we, from a city perspective, right prior to this project, we're kind of operating in parallels. <clears throat> The police developed the real-time crime center, had their own slew of cameras. Mm -hmm. Traffic was doing the same thing at Hampton. We're both doing it when we're both building up systems that each could benefit from. It could benefit me to see their cameras for traffic. It could benefit them to look at our cameras for crime. So from the city of St. Louis, in general perspective, why are we spending two different amounts to build up our own silos? Let's put it together and share our resources, and that's really how it started. And I understand that, and, and but but it, that comes from, I've been here long enough to know, that comes from decisions. Like, we used to have police out in our uh, community, and then people said, oh, uh, Clarence Harmon came along when he was the police chief, even though we didn't want it, and got rid of our policing in our community. So we don't need, we need more concentrated police instead of having the 8th district, the 7th district, mm -hmm. the 6th district. So that comes along with somebody pushing an agenda that at the end, nobody ever goes back and visits and say, this was horrible. It didn't work. They just keep, so then the new police chief comes on, he made bigger districts, okay? So that the 6th district comes from, where do you start up at? Uh, Riverview, the 270, and goes all the way down to 
uh, downtown. That's a dumb idea. Only somebody who doesn't understand the 6th District at all would have put that much together. So I'm saying people keep pushing these ideas in the sake for the sake of, well, this is better. Um, it's going to be uh, better in the long run, but I'm not seeing these long run pictures. Well, I'm seeing that the actual result of this is now I think I just heard from the police that they're going to kind of sort of break back up the six into a several so certain people going to be a uh, We got police officers who are nuisance officers. Some are going to be up on, I guess, uh, what's your two neighborhoods? Uh, what's your neighborhood? Park, Baton. Baton. And North Point. No, but the one that's at North Point is going to be someplace else. But my whole point is that. Then they go back and try to undo some of what they did, but they don't ever fix it. So I hear what you're saying, that it will cost less money. Ultimately, we can work together. But I don't know if what the beginning was uh, a good idea. I don't know if putting it down there with the police in the beginning was a good idea, if we couldn't have just left it with the traffic. So, And I don't have enough uh, information, but I do have en enough non-trust of the way the system has worked that I can't go along with it anymore. I'm mad at me still for voting for Metro Lincoln and money and them promising me, we, I promise you, I swear on everything that's holy that we're going to have it, and then I come down here and we don't have it now. So I need more information. If there, you know, the stuff you gave me now, I need to go home and read it and look at it. I can't support it right now because I don't trust this. Not you. You, uh, haven't, you, you, you have not told me anything. I just got to. I'm not understanding this, and so, and I don't know, I need to look at some other stuff, but it's not, now I'm usually pretty quick at picking up where things are going. This is not going in, this sounds more like somebody has an agenda that they're pushing, and this is what they want to do, and they tell us, oh, we got to do this like this. And, and it started with Freeman asking the question about the money. I would have liked a better answer, yeah, we are committing that money up front then. Oh, no, we're really not, and we're going to give it back. The, when, when you don't give me straight answers, that makes me not believe you. I'd take a, I'd, I'll take a bitter pill first, then give me that sugar, and then you give me that bitter pill next. Okay. Well, and that was a what-if question. What if we don't get it? Then we would have to give it back, but we're committed to giving it. So we, we're not when I say give we, the, the city. Back. And, yeah. and, and right, and, and again, they're saying they don't know where the cameras, so a plan, what I would look for was, why don't you come here and say, this is where we, um, these are not exact, but this is where we kind of plan on putting them. Then you would leave Sam's fears, you would leave Chris's fears, you would leave her fears, uh, mm -hmm. Cara's fears, and mine, okay? I haven't really been pushing for the cameras, so that ain't even a thing for me because I'm old enough that I don't necessarily love cameras, okay? Because I'm still of the, do I want uh, Big Brother looking over my shoulder? I've encouraged my residents to buy their own small cameras and put them in alleys and things, so it ain't even my agenda. But I'm just saying, a better way to do this for me would to come with some of a semi plan saying, the, so be assured, Alderman Moore and Spencer and uh, Carter, that we are going to do some fair things in your community. When you just come with a blanket thing and we don't have that in place, <coughs> you're not assuring me. Okay, okay, but part of this too, and if you listen to what John said earlier, we don't have the money yet. I'm now they've got the money from, from downtown, the, what is it, 250000 Right. We do have that money now, and that's the money that they actually started doing some of the projects. So, you know, as far as information, they've got the plan and how to disperse the money, but we don't have actually everything down there because we haven't got the money to pay for it. I know, and then that, that, and what happens, so downtown got their money, we get this, that's who they're going to start working with, and that's what I'm saying. You ought to, if you're courting me, and you got all the money with your other girlfriend, you better come with something to show me what you're going to do with me. And it may not be in stone, but you got to at least say, well, these are kind of, let me tell me a little sweet lie or something, okay? These are um, Alderman Moore. So we're kind of planning over here on Newstead, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Alderman Carter, we're planning someplace over here. It doesn't have to be exact, but this is kind of the big picture of what we're doing. You're telling me to sign this check, and then I'll get back to you later. And I'm telling you, I don't want to sign the check. I want some more specificity. I want to be, you to be more specific about where you plan it, even if it's not permanent. Just a look at so that if you don't do it, I'll be back here saying, remember when you gave me this? Because I'm good for that. And I keep all things. And this is what you told me you were kind of planning to do. And why is it that I just see all of this downtown? So you, you obviously was lying to me. And then you're not going to have any credibility with me. So I just need more 
I, I think you could come up with a, a plan without it being in, in, in uh, solid, you know, or it being in, in, described in stone. You could come up with a plan that said, this is where we're headed with this. And usually when you don't give us information, it's because you don't want us to know where you're really headed with it. Older woman tires. Okay. I'm not, I, 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 <laughs> this is, uh, there you go. <laughs> What y'all want to do next? I think. Who's next? Are there any members of the committee yeah. that would like to have something in Conway? And we'll get non committee members after the committee members have spoken. All right. Just to, you know, my perspective is the feds are giving us the money for traffic congestion reduction and, and emissions. That's the premise of why we get the money. And I assume that people both from South St. Louis and North St. Louis drive all the major arteries down into downtown to work and out. Is that kind of what I'm thinking? I mean, I could be wrong, but there are not too many people have helicopters. Um, the, um, I do just see a little smudge of Grand Avenue. I assume that Grand Avenue I see the little block, blue dots up at Grand and um, Cass, but I assume Grand Avenue is, a, is, is actually considered a part of this. My map just kind of ends yeah, on the yeah. left. This, yes, this for the retiming efforts, the highlighted green is really where, from a signal perspective, it makes sense logistics of where the where it's hard. Right, but I mean, long term for the full grant, is Grand Avenue considered an artery? Kings yes. Highway yes. is. Is it Kings Highway in South St. Louis, or is it going to be Kings Highway in North St. Louis too? All over. Okay. All the all those arterials I named from. I, I just wanted to make sure. Right. Um, you're, you're correct. And then if, if we do Grand Avenue, then I get that fiber cable down Grand at those signals. Right. That's the the premise. I get for this. Four, this is the heavy lifting that will. Open no, no, no. I read. Exactly. That's what I say. It can be way more. So, uh, okay. And the, the feds are going to pick up 80% of this. Correct. And well, then um, just, uh, just ask Alderman Al Ortman just very quickly on that fiber cable. If I get that fiber cable like down Grand, which is a, down my ward, what's my reduction in cost of, of running the, the real time cameras? Well, then the only thing that you have to pay for is the camera or the LPR, which would be the license plate recognition camera, and then the connection from the uh, the traffic box where the fiber is up to the light or up to the cameras on on the light. That would be the cost. And I don't really, uh, I think they've got a guesstimated cost right now for the cameras. Um, but not for the labor because every box is right. located. Right, at least I got my corner. fiber somewhere Yes, near the fiber me. is there. That's the important thing that we're not running fiber. I don't, I don't yes, that's the expensive thing. I, I could use all the capital money that I have running fiber and get one camera. You know, in this way, we're, what I'm planning, you know, for the crime part uh, is, you know, all my cameras are going up except for one where the fiber already is. Okay, and then. If I can afford it. And then is Jefferson and Martin Luther King considered major arteries? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. No further questions. Martin Luther King is the worst looking major artery in our whole city. Is I have. I think that. I just wanted. It's more so not a question. It's just for uh, um, for clarification. So um, so. The study will do all of Kings Highway and Grand, but we don't necessarily have to extend fiber or do anything in those areas, correct? The, the, the study, the quote unquote study for this is downtown circulation and retiming. <coughs> That's one component. The fiber slash camera design is citywide. And through okay. that design process, we'll figure out again where the cameras go and the pathway to them. Okay, and, and, and this is the last question I have. Do we have a cost for that design? Oh, I'm sorry. It's an issue. I'm sorry. I should have looked. I should not have There's a financial plan. Okay, I'll, I'll find it. I'll find it. That's all I have. Six hundred and seventy-five thousand. But that includes assistance with the operation. It's a little complicated. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Committee members are all
I've been looking at this map for the longest, and I finally found a street in my ward. Where? And I'm up in the corner by the two blue dots on your right hand side. Cash? You, you'll see Grand and Bacon. This is the And then a little part of Cash I have. That's the two I've Why wouldn't this map reflect the whole city of St. Louis? This, this is not for the, the fiber and camera design. Yeah. This, this map is only relative to the, the study downtown for circulation and the retiming downtown because of the new arch grounds and new bridge. So that aside, we don't have the locations for the cameras or the fiber design because it's not been defined yet through the design process, but it will include in general all the major arterials in the downtown areas discussed. I would hope that my trying to get an understanding don't delay my cameras any further because I need the cameras bad. I, I need Big Brother, unlike my colleague in the first one, I need Big Brother bad because my brothers are cutting up. Big sister mom. And I need to get it, but I'm just, uh, I'm baffled by the whole thing. What do those two blue dots mean? In the this, right is a, this is a signal system map where each signal, each dot on there is uh, the shape and color are defined by the way it's grouped in our, <coughs> our signal management software. <coughs> so if I look at all this work down, this is downtown. I look at all these green and yellow and blue and red. Will eventually that come to the other communities? This map, if it showed the whole city of St. Louis, includes the legend for them as well with different colored circles and, and squares for them as well. They're all in our... There's about three or four hundred traffic signals on our central signal software. And this is just a color coding. And they're not all in one group, per se, for timing. They're all separated. And, that's, and this map is a visual representation of how we have them grouped in our software. We just zoomed in for the purpose of this, of this application to show where the downtown study portion, not the cameras or fiber. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to go off the record for a second. Uh, did we do this when we got the bicycle ra uh, routes? Because you know I'm an angry man about them bicycle routes. <laughs> so they didn't ask me about the bicycle routes, so I'm wondering why they're asking about this. Look like the East West Gateway Council have their own mind and their own brain. They do what they want to do. So why are they asking us now for this? If, you, if we're going to have matching funds, I don't understand because they took my major street, which was Martin Luther King, and ruined the whole street and I got to prove that the people want the street back and I'm getting beat up every day about the streets. So I don't understand why East West Gateway is even asking us to help them out because they do what they want to do in the downtown area. So I'm present. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'm not, uh, thank you, I'm not, uh, interested necessarily in holding this up, but I think the confusion here is in a large part because we only have a map of downtown when it sounds like this project is a more citywide project. And so perhaps the confusion, um, you know, could be alleviated by providing some additional information about, you know, you know, a map with, even if it was, as you pointed out, Jamie, just a map with um, all the arterials highlighted that will be investigated for fiber. Um, and you know some additional information provided to the members of the committee to look upon this right. more favorably and i'm curious if the timeline for this grant or moving ahead is such that um you know waiting for uh, a little bit additional information to get you know broader support here is feasible option at this point point. and i'm just you know because i Timeline for the grant because yeah. I think you know to see that map to your point you know where you know would be, but let me let me ask Jamie. With the information we know, could you develop a map with any more information without getting a design to give more data to the committee? <clears throat> I'm trying to think, there's probably multiple multiple sources, like this is a map I have of just the signals, there's probably a map of just the fiber, there's probably not a map readily available of some of the recent camera <coughs> locations. I don't know if I can put them all together, I guess it's... But it's mainly guess, identifying existing information, and again, we don't know exactly where the proposed cameras will go until we get into that design level. 
-hmm. So we've got existing. I don't, I'm, Chan. I don't think she's asking about the the existing cameras. Yeah. The exist what the the plan for where <coughs> the new fiber may go. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Okay, and, so, and if we do, right. and and that's what you know, this is confusing right. because this is basically already there. Right, and you so, know, and and then and then we as representatives of our wards tend to look at it and say, what is in the ninth ward? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and just to clarify, you know, there's no cameras, right, Mike, in the south side either? Mm -hmm. no. no. Okay, That's so there's none on the north side, there's none on the south side. They're downtown and central west end are where the, the crime cameras are. Okay, so, uh, and then, and then we're, some of us will be building off of that. But if we can get a, a map just showing uh, the potential of where the new cable will go the thing of it is you can't hold them to it because we don't know yeah, we don't know design. cost and we don't know design yet because they haven't sure. gotten there but, but John will it hurt to hold it for a week well what we do have identified in the first page of the application that we just sent out were all the routes that we'll be studying under this well but the bad thing is is that came today and I should have had that to get it out to everybody and then everyone could have seen it and that's the alderman from the first is complaint, just like it's mine, mm -hmm. that we get so much loaded at a meeting like this, we don't have time, we don't have time to absorb it. Mm -hmm. So, and this is why, you know, we, and I'm not pounding on you, why we met earlier, you know, you could have given me that and I could have made copies for everyone in here and, you know, everyone would have had a better idea of, of what it is. Can we hold the bill for a week to get any information, you know, that, that's been requested? Sure, the week delay would not impact the schedule. Okay. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, we'll hold the bill for a week, and then if anyone could list out, you know, I want to make sure everyone gets what it is. If you do your list, yeah. you know. But, I, but do you want me, you don't do email if I send it to you can, your secretary? No, you can email. Okay. I, I do. Oh, you do now? I'm just slow. I don't do it. She <laughs> okay. does it for me. Okay, so I was going to say, do, do you mind if I just send it directly to your secretary? No, that that's best? fine. That's Okay. That's what everyone else does. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And I think the most important thing would be, you know, to have the, yeah, like you said, how it's going to impact each of us in our world. Oh, not mine. Oh, mine is. I'm waiting on yours, too, and I'm out of here. So, in other words, by that time, it'll be the whole meeting. That'll be the whole meeting. When I was to pass as the chair of the streets, is that each alderman should call the first alderman that they want to address the board. I'm sure all of you do. To find out what your people think about it, because your people collectively see a hell of a lot more than we see. Unless some of them call us, what mm -hmm. goes on in our ward, we wouldn't even know about it. But we get all that on these busy streets, we need to find out what the. Thanks. In our particular ward, we need to find out from the people in our ward what they think because more of them have an opinion than just us, the older persons. And our basic job is to, uh, 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 let's say, figure out what it is they're interested in, what's on their mind, what they're concerned about, and then we'll bring it down here. That's why they elected us. So we can meet next Thursday? Next Thursday, Mr. Chairman. Well, but I want to know if any other members of the committee have something to say. Then I want to open it up to the rest of the people. Here. I would just like to say I have already met with my ward. This is important to me because it allows me to put cameras up in my ward at a less cost. I don't have to run the, the infrastructure to do that. So I've already met with BPS. I've met with my people. I've decided a budget, I've met with the police department, I've met with traffic. Um, I've been working on this probably since last November, or maybe even beyond that, when did we meet, maybe last fall. So, you know, I really think that if people are interested in providing this service for their ward, that they need to reach out and step up and, and get the information. Um, it's, you know, the Real Time Crime Center has invited us down. We've had several meetings down there. Um, and I'm interested because I have an issue in my ward. You know, I am on the south side, but I do have issues, and I have a varied population. 
And I'm trying to address those issues along with the safety committee in my ward. So, uh, you know, BPS has been very helpful. The police department has been very helpful. They've given me some ideas of where things need to go. I'm not going to be able to do it all at once. But I have a plan, and I'm getting a plan together. And I think that you know, sitting here and and then you know, not educating yourself, I I, I don't want to cast aspersions. But you know, we're each representing our wards, and we need to reach out and, and seek out the services in the city that are, are good for our ward. That's all I have to say. Well, Ward Bill 285 does not prevent, nor does it inhibit. Nor does it say to any alderman, you must do A, B, C, or D. No. You mm -hmm. will select what it is you want Absolutely. in your whole war. I this agree. board bill just gives you the opportunity to be able to do what you want in your war. And ward. provide more opportunity for less cost, more bang for your buck. Well, well, yeah. Some and people you don't want to count plenty of to it's determine not. if your people would like to have cameras, then as the alderman, you have a right to do that. Did you still have it? She was not on the committee, but she had a question. I don't know. I mean, I can't see it. I know. That's why I was, I was, I was bringing it to you. I was bringing it to your attention. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I, I really just kind of wanted to um, speak about this because I've been working on this for three years. And um, one of the problems I had early on was the fact that we didn't have a central location for the communication system. We had these separate ones. And so now it's central with the police department, which is where it should be, because crime is the number one problem, not who runs a red light. So I like it where it is now. And what I've been doing is taking my residents to the center so they can understand what it does and what it will do in the future and then being educated about it. And since they've been going, they own it. It's like, okay, <laughs> whatever we gotta do to rally for this, we want it and you spend the dollars, your capital dollars, to make sure you can get some cameras. So now that we have this opportunity to get the infrastructure money, which is what has prohibited us all along, mm -hmm. we can't afford, I look out for money, no. we can't put nothing in the ground. We never, we would yeah. never get it. But they don't always make so, it. <laughs> so now that we have the ability to do it at the major intersections all across the city, because when you sit there and you watch those cameras and we lose them, when they're chasing somebody, because we, we don't have those cameras in other parts of the city, that's critical. That's critical to get these guys. And they got to know that they're going to get got. Okay? So, um, and then I take and then I take those same people in the community, and we go to our roll calls and our police sta stations so they can meet those guys one-on-one, -on -one, and it brings back that information full circle on how you mm -hmm. what cause all of that. And once you go in there and you see what those cameras can do, you will want them to start on that infrastructure right now at that moment. So that you can start putting some cameras in. That's how critical it is. It's critical. I would have to agree with both. I mean, I, I totally agree. And I think what I was suggesting maybe was just uh, recognition that there are older uh, men here and uh, that have some questions and confusion and, right. and I think in an effort to maybe find, you know, that was my point, was just rather to be able to provide a little more information to folks that clearly have questions still about uh, what this particular funding may be able to do for their war. Thank you. Okay, so. Are you suggesting public hearings on the no, 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 not at all. She's at a no. flat. Okay. No, no. And I just want to say, so before re racist redistricting, I was the chair of public safety. When they built the Justice Center, I was the chair of public safety. Um, and I've been going to these police meetings since any of you, before all of you were elected except for two, okay? And i also been dealing with the politics of, how, and then sitting in here, coming back here and watching some people struggle real hard and the other people waltz down here and get cameras. There's some unfairness that goes on too. And there's also, money, you may be spending your money on something and somebody else is not spending their money on something. So there's a politics that goes into this that is a unfair. And that is what I'm talking about. As I said before, I'm not stressing cameras as much because we've gone to a different thing. But we cannot sit here and act like that, oh, it's so unfair. Because when I sat here and listened to the whole thing about Antonio and Sam, and I'm not going to say the person who was the recipient, because that person, I don't, I'm not mad at them for getting it. But it's not done in a fair 
an equitable manner, and that's my concern. Fair and equitable. You do it with your capital money. No, that is not all yeah, that would happen. Uh, okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. Sure. No, I don't, okay. I'm still really talking. I'm sorry. talking. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and I'll let you talk, okay? That is not what has happened, so you all may not know that, okay? And that's what happens when you don't have all the history. So when people say, enlighten yourself and get, I, I bet you there's not many people who've been dealing with it, been at the police meetings more than me, okay? And so I just know that everything is not fair. So I'm not even pushing for Sharon, because again, I'm not pushing. But I don't like hearing, you've been trying to get cameras, you've been trying to, Antonio, and then somebody else who is, happens to be my friend, and I ain't met. But that's what has been going on. If we start mapping history, and I got history with HUD, block grant money, and everything else, there are certain neighborhoods that have been intentionally left out, and that's what my problem is. And if we don't all stand up for that, um, then that becomes a problem. So I just want it to be fair. So if you don't want me to vote for something, show me what your general plan is. And then it ain't, it, it, I mean, as long as you generally go, it may not be my war, but he's going to get it or somebody over here, and then she's going to get it or somebody over there. But not everything focused in the central court is what I'm saying, okay? All of them from the Thank you. This grant is a traffic enhancement grant. And just a little clarification, Alderman from the 4th has to pay the same thing that the Alderman for the ninth does for cameras. Mm -hmm. These cameras are war driven by your capital. I don't know a ward out there that's gotten free cameras that a business district hasn't paid for, not, not, not the, the, the Alderman with capital money. If we want them in our wards, we're the ones that are driving that. And I'm one that's also at the table, just like Sam is, and just like Carol Howard is, uh, Antonio and I was here at the same meeting, you know, with with Antonio, and he's the pioneer of it, you know. And and I'm no, kind of actually isn't. I did that before I left, and I and, Je and Jeffrey Boyd can I, tell. I thought I was talking. Okay. I thought I had the floor. You do. Okay. But that's not well, true. Well, well, and I'm just saying he's the first one that I know of that actually came up with cameras, um, and we do have fiber out there now. And what this grant, along with this grant, is going to enable us to put more fiber and more intersections throughout the whole city. I don't know how much the, it'll cover. Uh, I don't know a number for cost. And I don't think BPS does at this time, or anyone does. They can throw an estimation out uh, of what it will be, but they won't know until we get the grant and they proceed with the study. And maybe at that point in time, they can come back with us with more information. And just like I wanted to make clear, the map that Jamie's going to do to get back to us, we can't hold it as gospel because uh, the money could run out before we get to the end of the line. And then we're gonna apply for another grant. We'll be back here again and again and again because that's what they do up there. They continue to keep applying for grants. Um, I mean, we've got time on this. We can hold it in committee and try to get any information that we want, but this is not cameras and awards for crime. That's driven by the alderman. This is traffic enhancement emissions that's why we're getting this grant and that's what it's got to do that's what it's for can we hold it anyone else i have applied for two traffic enhancement grants i applied for one of the circle and i did lose the money after three years and i put my match up and my commitment up and i lost the grant it was really about two points why because the businesses on the circle, we were doing a roundabout, the businesses on the circle would not come to the meetings to talk. They would not give up their right ways, even though we were going to make new driveways for them to enter and exit and make it safer. Um, they wanted money. They, they said, take us to court. We'll do, do them in the domain. And I lost the grant. Um, and that was hmm. the Alderman Carter. But that was one of his, 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 his things that he kept me on point, but he really didn't help me get that crap out of East West Gateway. I have a grant now on Broadway. I put a $500,000 match down. We're doing that right now. Hope it'll be done in this fall. And my question is going to be to you, John, is this going to include the fiber optics? Because I was just down at the Real Crime Center yesterday, and I saw the neighborhoods that the cameras are in, and I think there is one on top of Tower Grove. From my understanding, they're business associations and districts that get together and they buy the cameras and then they have to pay for the fiber optics. So I have had discussions in my ward of cameras at the Chain Rocks Bridge, cameras on Broadway, 
And I've asked, could you really tie this into the real time crime center when it's way up there? Mm -hmm. And they said, well, we need the fiber optics. So I'm trying to figure out how I can apply for those funds so that I can get those cameras. Because, as you said, the districts go all the way up to review 270. Stupid. But the police don't get up there all the time because it's a long way to go. That's so can we have some cameras? Can we open up to make sure we have parking on Chain Rock Bridge without everybody being victimized by car burglaries? So it's something I'm looking into that I would like to also apply for. But I did lose the money. So you need, so you need, you need uh, fiber to run all the way there. Uh -huh. right. And I'm gonna have to pay for it. But the cameras aren't as expensive. Right. As I but it may not were. touch that. But my That's my right. grant on Broadway does not include huh? cameras. It is a it's it's not putting fiber break. in the whole mm -hmm. the whole. In the and it will city. succinct. It will make the light succinct for traffic. But I didn't get the cameras. So fairly yeah. different. Well, with camera cameras, we're getting better technology, and the price is coming down. So but I would, I would recommend anybody going out there real time crime scene. So we would really we'll beat that dead horse to death. <laughs> uh, we said we're gonna hold it. <laughs> okay. Well, any alderman that would like to have cameras or whatever else they in their ward, they have the right and the authority to apply for it. Whether you got the money or not, that's a different story. But you have to uh, decide that's so what you want, and I wouldn't decide that, and I don't recommend you decide that unless you talk to the people in your ward that are affected by this problem that you're seeing, that you're perceiving. So uh, would you all suggest we have some public hearings on this? Or no. 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 It's a grant. We don't want to come back. No. Come back. Well, well yes, sir. is there a, a, a here from Conway that he'd like to have a continuation of this meeting next week? Yes. Anybody would like to have that? Yes. So, okay. I second well, that. It's Thursday yeah. at, the meet, at the same time. Okay. Is that so right? We'll meet right here. But we got to bring, good. we need to bring something, Mr. Chairman. He's going to bring all the stuff. He already said he was going to bring all the stuff. Great. He's going to, he well, asked him to get it already. Well, well each alderman bring as much information as they have and that they would like to give to the committee. He already said. That he was going to have them send us the, the, the big pick, the thing that they just got today, right? And go get that to us, right? Uh, Jamie's going to put together a, a map of what possibly where the fiber right. might go. And he'll get copies, and I can get it to the chair. Right. Well, and then we were supposed to send a question. You give me a copy, and I'll make sure everyone gets it. Okay. Well, one thing and any questions, if you email me with it, I'll make sure that it gets to whoever needs to answer it. Now, one thing we're missing each alderman knows or should know better than anybody else what the problems are, particularly the traffic problems in their war. That's why you got elected. So what you need to do is to come with whatever you think the problems are. If you don't have an idea what the, uh, or no recommendations of how to solve those problems, that's why we got these street people. Right. These people are professionals at traffic and problems, and the police are even better than they are when it comes to problems that, are, that, that, that occur in your ward as a result of traffic. So I would suggest that we come and make some recommendations or get recommendations from them, and then we'll make a decision of what it is we're going to do. Excuse me, Mr. No, Mr. Chairman. Would you like to take up the next bill? Uh, uh, Alderman Davis is here to present the bill. Okay. <laughs> oh, did, did you have a question? Uh, Alderman Moore, did you still have a question? Yes, I, I want to make sure that everyone understands that I want for my ward what all the wards are getting. I want to make sure it, it seems a bit unfair with a map that doesn't reflect that in my community. So I've been screaming and hollering by camera even before Antonio French. I was. Mr. Yeah. Clerk, you need to, you need I, can't, to send a I can't hear myself. Well, well, you need to send a letter to the street department 
requesting whatever it is you want. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I've been begging, screaming, dancing, jumping up and down, being nice, being good, being loud, being whatever. I've been having, I've been meeting, okay. having meetings with the with the street department and the police department. All I yeah, want is with a, me. I'm chairman of the streets. Okay, but uh, but when it come to cameras, you know, like you say, we have the right to get as each alderman to do what we need to do. So I went and did what I thought I was supposed to do. Put up two hundred thousand dollars to get cameras. And I, all I wanted to do is reflect. Well, I need the five. I want five on every. Well, nothing what happened with your money that they used? They took the money, and I'm still behind. Who is they? I, I mean, yeah. wherever it went to the BPS. No, but who is they? How BPS. Did they take your BPS money? has my money that I put in to get these cameras. And they've been talking to me and working with me, trying to get the cameras. But what I feel is that I should have had my cameras before the sixth war. Well, I put who in for are my. They? BPS. That's who take the oh, board. Well, you capital. need to do a resolution and bring them down this committee. And we'll oh, no, it ain't that serious. It's, it's not that serious, Mr. Chairman. It's not like that a, serious. Like no, no, it's very the serious. Street. You can put it up in this committee. Can you let me know? Too? Say, say this. You know, I went there. You know, Mr. Wilson was my mentor. For what it is that the Alderman of the Fourth Ward has requested, then you need to bring whoever it is. They're working on it now. Okay. Well, why'd you bring it up here? <laughs> I wanted you to know that I still want, I want the fiber to re okay, and the this map to reflect. Okay, the third and the fourth step outside. Well, <laughs> Sam, Sam, take my vote. You can have it. Thank okay. you, sir. Go to the rest All of right. the I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Woo. Are there any other? We got a board bill one, a 281. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Board Bill number 281 is uh, requesting a honorary designation for the 700 block of North Spring Avenue to be named in honor of Leon Henderson, uh, who was a former president of Cartner Ritter School for a number of years. He passed uh, last month. Uh, he has also been quite a supporter of education as a whole in the state of Missouri. He has um, done so many things that it's just hard for us to even capture it all in, in talking about him. So as we uh, look at um, how that school came to be on North Spring, many people from, who are former graduates and people who have uh, taught there and the current people there called and requested this honorary street name. So um, I have a letter from uh, Cardinal Ritter School, from the president of the college school. Mm -hmm. I also have signatures from the institutions that are around the school, Loyola Academy, the Urban League, the resident whose home sits directly across the street, mm -hmm. Century Electric, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, also, um, we also have a, 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 an additional letter that uh, came from the school itself because the president is very, very concerned and hopes that this takes place. Um, in the process of this, um, we just had a memorial for him last Saturday at uh, St. Alfonso Rock, but there will be a very large memorial that is being uh, put together by the alumni of the school, and that will be held in mid-March. So uh, if we want to uh, get this approved and get the sign made so that we can honor him properly. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Question for you. Yes, sir. In the 700 block of Spring, what businesses and residences and addresses are owned by somebody other than Leon, uh, the people that are requested? Uh, so, uh, okay, so what we did was because you know Cardinal Ritter School itself takes up the entire west side of the street of the 700 block from Washington to Enright. And so on the opposite side of the street, on the east side of the street, there's one residential home. It's the burnt down facade of Leonard Baptist Church. And then on the north side of the street, uh, it's the back end of VA Hospital. And they have no concerns and a parking lot owned by Grand Center and they are in compliance of this as well. And so that's it. We don't have anything else. 
And so we got additional signatures from people who are around the corner and down the street because everybody just wants to show their support to this. Okay. What are the signatures? Uh, right here. Okay. You have them? Have we got them? Yes, yes. we do. Okay. And the page three and three. Oh, yeah. We got them. I don't have a problem with that. So okay. That's okay. So, uh, if there are no questions, I'll recommend that we pass our board bill. Uh, second. Second. <clears throat> Sweet. Alderman Conway? Aye. Alderman Orban? Aye. Alderman Moore? Aye. Alderman Carter? Aye. Alderman Tide? Aye. Alderman Murphy? Aye. Alderman Choder? Aye. Alderman Spencer? Aye. Chairman Bosley? Aye. We have nine ayes. I just want to know, Alderman Moore, you didn't ask your pet questions. My pet? Where the money coming from? Did you pay the money? Because thanks uh, to Jeffrey uh, Moore. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, but he still always asks this. Uh, Th and then he says, got, thanks to got, the alderman from the 26th. I got two coming. <laughs> I did pay the $360 out of put my capital the, fund. Put it on the record. For this time. Uh, also. <laughs> Conway was going to pay for it. Oh, he, can, he probably has more capital money than I do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, but alderman Moore asks that it's question it's every true. time. Every time. And yeah. then puts in the, the alderman the, from the 22nd, pass that. <laughs> Yes. Mr. Chairman, yeah, Mr. Chairman and Clerk, please. Yes. Uh, there's been a request by Alderman Carter to add his name as a sponsor of the bill. Okay. I also like my name added. Yeah. Okay. That's in bank. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. The committee in bank. The committee would like to have their names added to this bill, please. Noted. So noted. Thank you. There are three. Three. Nobody's ever done it. Nobody has ever done it. Nobody has ever done it. Thank you. We'll take them in order. Okay. 297 is uh, an honorary street name for Reverend Dr. Ronald L. Bobo of uh, Westside Baptist Church on the corner of Marcus and uh, Page. And we're going to take that 4600 block of Page from Marcus to Cora. And unfortunately, in there, there are no residents, but churches are only only people that <laughs> in the block. Well, they don't vote anyway. yeah, so. oh, I, I'm against this. I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alderman, it seems to me you, you are naming all of your streets after the pastors. preachers. <laughs> I got 150. <laughs> I have 150 pastors. There won't be any streets left in, uh, in the fourth ward. That's not Reverend Doctor. Reverend Doctor. Reverend Doctor Chris Carter. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't have one after me. If there are no other questions, mm -hmm. I'll move that uh, recommend that we make a motion to pass Board Bill 297. Second. Previous roll. Previous roll. Oh. Uh, I'm rolling down. Keep going. Keep going. We rolled down. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep moving, Mr. Chair. Board Bill 298. 298 is another pastor. <laughs> He's coming back to the first war, where Bishop, he believed. <laughs> Bishop R.J. War in the 4300 block, and that's nothing in that block but the church. I recommend. <laughs> There's a reason why the church I move that we pass for Bill 298. Second. Second. Previous, Previous row. Previous row. <laughs> Board Bill 304. 304 is a page in the 4600 block at Marcus. We're having a problem with people speeding through there. And we want to put a stop sign there to slow the traffic down a little bit. They drive about 45, 50 miles an hour on page because they took Martin Luther King from me and made Martin Luther King a two lane. So everybody goes over to page and speed down uh, page boulevard. It's a highway now. And so we need the people that are crossing the street. We got seniors on the new houses on the other side of the street. And we want to put a stop sign there so that people can get back. I, I, and I advise them not to step out in front of the cars. Just wait, <laughs> wait till they stop. Both sides of the street in the fourth ward. Yes, sir. Why don't you put some barrels up there on the corner? Now he's gonna put it on page, right? Yeah, I'll put it on page. So stop well, sign. You said both sides. Stop sign on page. Your wall. Yeah, but what would I put a barrel? That'd well, because if they speed, they're gonna run in there and tear their car. They stop. <laughs> they steal a car and then tear the barrel down. Yes, sir. 
Uh, uh, Mr. 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 Chairman, do not recognize her. <laughs> See, I got a good he suggestion. Said, okay. Yeah, uh, that okay, then. Yeah, okay, it's up to you. <laughs> uh, that's all right. Women. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. <laughs> all right, Spence. Okay, now, I, see, my thing, what I was going to say, and this what? is why at King's Highway and Marketplace, we have blinking, because uh -huh. my street is closed and the oven goes west. And so since people know that there's nothing to really, they don't have to stop, they barrel through. So right. I'm just going to suggest when you put that stop sign that you have the street department put something up warning people. That because stop ahead. That's, ex I, that's what's going to be my suggestion on both ways because I know people right. do barrel down that. Yep. And, and that will cause more accidents if they don't have some kind of warning that that's coming. So that, okay. that was from the person you didn't want to uh, recognize. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. You can recognize her now. <laughs> that's all I can recognize her now. Well, she don't want to be recognized. That's right, exactly. <laughs> have you looked into race intersections? Who is this, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> You question my intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is off. No, I'll just say like that. Was a that we, yeah. uh, if there are no other questions, I uh, recommend that uh, I'll let the panel move. Uh, so moved. Second, previous row. Oh, oh, oh. Very good. What about uh, we're going to keep on sitting here? We're going to move to Jack. No, we, no, we got Jack. Yeah. Yeah. What about Jack and I? I got bills, two of them. All and Jack. Tyson, he's next by seniority. All right. Okay. And chance two. So well, let's start with the easy one first. Okay. The one about closing Terry, wherever that is. I probably 283. 283. 283. 283. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Board, board bill, uh, 283 is a uh, board bill to close the 4900 block of Terry at uh, North Kings Highway Boulevard. Um, I actually have, I got to make the copy, everybody on the street signed it. Um, they, wanted, they had a big fight back when we closed all the other streets and they never could. I always require 60%. I don't look at anything to change unless it gets 60%. Yes. They got 100%. I'll make a copy and give it to the clerk. And so we're going to do a six months test and if it uh, if the people are pleased, they want it permanent. Mm -hmm. If there are no other questions, I'll recommend a motion. I make a motion. Second. Good. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. I got to get it back. Okay, get me back. Oh, I gave him a good suggestion. And he going to get me back. Okay, I'll take my suggestion back. No, what I want to what I want to know is yes, uh, it only takes six months to <laughs> get a, a permanent. No, uh, I always. I've been doing this six I'm, I, We do a six months test. We can do it. We can make it permanent anytime we want to. No, I make them six months. I make after them do six a six months, months test. Okay. I make well, them have sixty percent right any time you want to. But that's what, in my ward. I have always we have a written procedure that I outlined uh -huh. years ago, they and don't I don't like it. People, right. It's not, I beg your pardon. If they don't like it, they can go back. And and, and, mm -hmm. and within that six months, they have to give me another petition, petitioning it to close okay. back, to open oh, back up. If they don't do that then we go to permanent, and that's part of the petition. And um, we did that because closing streets, is you must be killing somebody's uh, spouse <laughs> or dog or something because it can be very, very uh, controversial. Mm -hmm. That's the word I want. Okay. <laughs> that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we do pass. Second. Board Previous three. row. Is there a second? There's been a motion. Second. Board Bill 283. Previous come row. Out with Previous a pass row. recommendation. Second. All right. Previous Previous second. row. <laughs> yes, all the, <laughs> all the parties seconded. Oh, I didn't And there's been a motion for previous, previous row. Oh, yes, all right, we'll entertain a motion to pass Board Bill 283 out. Is there a motion for previous rolls? Previous roll. No objections, it sounds like. All right. All right. Here's your next one again. All right. We got all the board uh, sharing ties with board bill 137. Trying to explain that what that okay. is. Okay. Well, yes, it is. And I was the original. Board bill 137 is an amendment to the uh, peddling and vendors. And I was the original person who introduced it back. Ooh, I don't want to say how many years ago. <laughs> okay. But anyway, um, there were some amendments uh, um, that I want to do to that. One of them is that we excluded out medians. So when you see all these people standing in the median selling stuff and, and begging and all of this, it's because we tried to attempt to do a, uh, uh, the firefighters came in and said, well, we, um, sometimes we uh, ask for money and we stand yeah, in the median. Right, right. But uh, what it, we ended up giving was too big of an exception. So 
people, if you go up to Kings Highway and Natural Bridge, it's a toll road up there. There's no grass up there. Um, the people have been hit by cars. So we, uh, I want to take that out. And then what I, I talked to, I went over and I talked to some lo the lawyers, uh, city councilors, uh, with our previous city councilor, uh, clerk. And so uh, peddling is not the same thing as, as soliciting money anyway, okay? So I didn't really need to exempt that out. Um, so I want to make sure that medians now are included so that I don't have people up at Kings Highway or any of any other places uh, because it's a dangerous thing really. They hold up the traffic. Uh, I've seen people get into arguments because they won't move and the people are honking. So that is one of the exceptions is the median. Um, uh, let's see here. There are um, section three, if you go to it, uh, where vending is prohibited. I'm sorry, page, I'm sorry, page two of 15. Pretty much stays the same, but for the new people, uh, I want to thank uh, Alderwoman Cara Spencer from the 20th because she did send me a, a significant list of questions, and then I realized that people hadn't been here, so they kind of didn't know uh, why we did this in the first place. I know you know. <laughs> I know you know. So, but but she did send uh, some good questions, and she asked about you know how were vending districts uh, created. Um, and each person who was the older person at the time created their own vending district because pretty much vending is prohibited except for where we allowed in this bill. Um, and, and so um, I think she had one in her ward and I couldn't tell her why the previous older people, um, be it Craig or Michael Sheehan, why they uh, created that. But that if anybody wanted to create other ones that I would hold this bill or that we would do a, uh, um, an amendment on the, uh, the floor because maybe people have rethought when they, where, they, where they want vending. Um, in my war, people hate it, and they don't want it any place. Um, she did ask questions about, uh, also I think about how close um, uh, we would allow vendors to be or peddlers to be, and I kind of explained to her that one of the things I would hate to have is a t-shirt shop, uh, bricks and mortar, and then um, somebody set up a t-shirt place right if, selling right on the streets, and that's really hard for the people who gotta do all the things. Um, she asked some really good questions, actually. Um, made me really think about some of the things. Um, let's see here. Let me tell you what else she asked. So that, well, maybe I'll just go through my bill and then I'll talk well, about. Do we that. have a red line version? I did highlight. Most of this stuff has not changed. I'm just going over it. So just so right, just the highlighted. Right. Only the highlighted words. It's changed. changed. Right. I'm just going over it because you, me, and Ortman and, and and Freeman are the only ones that were here. Before. It's mostly all the same thing. Point of order. Yes. It's, it's not at all. You, you, I, and I, I think it might just be a confusion with the version of the code as existed that you're trying to amend. I think you're using an old version because you've changed the number of the boundaries. Of I the have them of highlighted. I changed the number of what? Of bound, actual boundaries of districts. No, I wasn't trying to, so okay. I don't know where yeah. this came to. That's I'm not trying to change boundaries. Right, and I think okay. there's just confusion. This, this version that you're That's trying to amend is not the most recent version of the vending code mm -hmm. as codified in law currently. Okay. This, and I, we can talk about it, but it changes a number of I would uh, No, I wasn't trying to change okay. anything. The only thing that, so what I did is, is send uh, a bill to them with just my changes, okay? So then we probably don't have the current one. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm not changing anybody's okay. districts, right. okay? Yeah. The only thing that I'm changing was in was the median. That was my change. Right. And I exempted King's Highway out of everything. Okay. I mean, the medians. Yeah. Nobody else's stuff am I trying to change. Right. So, so then, as drafted, we just need to update the version. That's exactly right. Okay. okay. So, and I'll go over it, and then we can hold it, and then I'll have it redone, okay? That'd because, be great. right. Thank because, you. Because, so, don't, we're not changing anybody's vending district. In fact, yeah. Yeah, because, no. yeah, okay. No, thank no. you. No. <laughs> so, and just to give you guys a little history, so there was a big high hysteria, and who came down here? Bill, uh, what's his name? McCullen, and uh, the guy that died that was used to work for the Post Dispatch, a black guy. Um, Freeman. Yeah, Greg Freeman. Freeman. So they loved vending. Mm -hmm. So everybody got so scared that they ran and they got rid of vending. And then everybody hated it. So then, Sharon, Sharon, we hate this. And I didn't care what they thought. So I came right back and we reintroduced the same board bill that we had had before. Um, and because we all know the problems we have with vendors, okay? And so we passed it right back. So no, I'm sorry if we have the wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not touching anybody's okay. anything. I don't know what you think is good in your ward, okay? Thank you. 
Okay, and I don't know, and, and I couldn't tell her about the Cherokee and anybody else's. Okay. My whole ward is exempted out, okay? Right. And in fact, most wards are exempted out unless mm -hmm. you put it in. Right. And okay. then, so this version would actually right. add the 14th Ward District back in, which was previously taken out. The 14th is here? Gee, yeah. The 14th, yeah. Which is no longer in existence. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Ooh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Some okay. Of this, some of this so, happened after redistricting. But, okay, so I went on, I, then I didn't. I some, of the, get, some of the changes. I understand, but what yeah. I'm saying, then it should have been in what I looked for, so I need to find out what happened. Yeah. Because I'm not trying to change anybody's anything. I just don't want, I don't want medians to be a part of anything. And also, I don't want Kings Highway to be part of selling, doing anything. Specifically, mm -hmm. and I want it posted in here. I have in here that you, and it's on page. Will you post it on Kings Highway? I'm getting page 13 of 15. Section 33, um, if you'll see, I expressly accept that everybody can do anything in all their meetings that disseminate news or whatever, mm -hmm. except for a King's Highway, and we express it is to expressly prohibit the sale, distribution, or sale of newspapers, pamphlets, handbills, written, or anything in the King's Highway Memorial Boulevard, okay? Mm -hmm. So my changes were that because we don't want the people, uh, they have wore the grass down, I'm going to have to pay to redo this for the mm -hmm. second or third time. It does not work there and it is a too busy uh, intersection for mm -hmm. it to be having somebody in the middle of the intersection and then running out and sitting there and holding up traffic. And so we have had a number of altercations that are unnecessary. So that was my big, and also my next big thing which is not highlighted and I will, when I bring this back, because I hold this in committee, so we can get it when we come back next week. I will um, red line. Uh, I also wanted a no solicitation and uh, vending signs posted mm -hmm. in the uh, Kings Highway meetings because one of the things that's happened is that when the uh, uh, license yeah. collector's office issues these permits that they're supposed to mm -hmm. wear, when they get them, and, and I want to say the license collector's office is here behind us if we have questions because there were some things I couldn't answer. When they get these permits and they put them on their, uh, they're supposed to wear them, they think that that means they can be everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so when I always roll up and I always come and say, you cannot vend here, you can't pedal here. Yes, I can. I got this license. I got this license. And so I want us to start posting. So And, and then I also, um, um, in other parts of the bill, talk about <coughs> saying exactly on the uh, license application and on the uh, where they can and cannot, um, because I thought that was a, uh, Confusing too, and that is in section. What page? Just a minute. I'm gonna say section and page, okay? Um, It's in the section where you apply for it. Okay, here it's, it's in section six, uh, and then on page. I had a specific part in here um, in which it is supposed to say that they have to say what parts are uh, where they are allowed to vend at. Okay, I don't see that now. I thought I just read that I'm missing Page something. Five. Not in the as license application content? Would that be in there, section seven? No, it's on page, he's right, it's page 515, okay. Uh -oh. Page five of 15. Every license shall state the vending district in which the license shall be uh, valid for. And that is because they really do think it's for everything. So I'm thinking that if we have it 
on there so that when you tell them you're not supposed to be vending here, then they can have to look at their own license and say, right, and you know, it doesn't say you can do it at every place. Okay? Does the license not already say that? Which district? I think it sets a question for the license collector's office. They don't? Seems like a good no, no. They, when they get a license, they, <laughs> they have should. <to> right. <laughs> okay. It doesn't. It just. It's so. That's why the, the confusion has been that we can just do it every. They think, oh, I got yeah. a license, so I want them to know that's not for every place. And then right. on our end, and, and and I didn't say it for everybody. I want mines posted so that they will know no vending mm -hmm. here, and I will be posting it all over my ward. No vending here. But other people may not want that. They just might want it on the license. Okay. Mr. Chairman, yes. Uh, I just want to make a comment. Uh, the guys were selling bean pies and final call newspapers up on Kings Highway and Natural Bridge in your in the medium in your ward, and the Muslim guys, you know, it's Assalamu alaikum, and the car came around Natural Bridge and hit one of the guys and knocked yep. him up on the sidewalk. And he said, "Oh Jesus." <laughs> But let me say this. Are you going to name a street farm? He was a Muslim, but he went back to his roots. Let me say this. I actually did call because I've talked to, uh, you know, I know Donald. Um, so I called them because I know they are one of the people. I called Matthew Dickey. I called anybody that I knew that was an organization to say, look, hey, they didn't do this before. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't allow it when it was the 20th Ward at all. And I, I was on it. Okay, under the, the all the people that came and didn't take care of my ward, um, they just multiplied, and you know it's a mess. So then try to uh, uh, to get it back going again. I've been telling them for uh, the last couple of years. I'm coming back with this, um, and they also are in the streets, which is already prohibited. They're in the streets more than they're on, as much as they're on the uh, medium, mm -hmm. and it's just a mess. And so that's why I wanted uh, posted that you can't do this. Okay. Because, um, and, and he has promised me that he would get them away from there, okay? So kids with them cups. Not just the kids, but the, paper, the newspapers, all of it in the middle of the street. Um, I, I have talked to him about it. I know before you came, Chris, I want to say Greg Carter used to be on them also about it up at Riverview. West Wilson, West, you're right, Riverview and West That's exactly right. All of them from the <laughs> I just want to kind of bring a point up, and I'm going from memory. Um, years ago when we did the first one and then there, uh, I'm thinking that some other legislation was passed that allows the, the street department to issue a certain license um, and it, they, they have to be a non-for-profit to be able to get this license but them, them were the ones them were the ones that we were having the problems with in the medium so kind of what you know, what you might want to make sure is that that is covered, you know, in this or, you know, we may have to address that too. And I'm just going from memory because because we've had the, the, the problems and um, if you call the police, the police don't really know that they're supposed to have this license mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. they're supposed to be wearing it on their neck. And normally it's only for a day or two. It's not the for itinerant. an extended it's the period. You got 25 of them. Right. So right. they, they, they're right. not duplicated. And so, so already in the bill, you're not supposed to be within 100 feet. I mean 150 feet, okay? So they're already breaking the law. And what you're talking about, we have a commission that allows for, uh, it's a separate little commission, that, that the, and it's a, some people appointed, that allows for them to do for soliciting for charity, okay? Is what you're talking about. But, so in my research, they don't usurp us, okay? They don't usurp, somebody's just, thinking that they do. They do not usurp our legal ability to say you cannot uh, pedal in the streets. That's a safety issue. Well, right. And yeah. my, my point is, right. when they're in the street, they're not legal anyway because exactly. they don't have a license right. to do that. So, exactly. And then the other point is, is when you call the police, they don't really know what they're, they are or aren't required to have. And um, before Alderwoman Spencer came in, uh, I mean, Alderman Schmidt, myself, every time we got a new captain, we'd have to send them yep. a copy of yep. the uh, ven vending ordinance because they don't know. Exactly. So, exactly. Um, I mean, there's an area in here which I acquired uh, on Merrimack, s south of Merrimack, for the uh, vehicle vendors, and they can do the uh, 
the fruit and certain flowers, and that's all they're supposed to do. But all the times, occasionally you'll see the balloons out there, or the stuffed animals. Um, and when it really breaks loose is when they park across from Walgreens, because then Walgreens will scream. Um, and that's not the vending area. The vending area is south of Merrimack to Ohio. So, Mr. Chairman. I move that we shut this down. Well, wait a minute. They all want from the You shut me down. I shut you down. <laughs> yeah, you told me, Sam, Sam. Uh, what, but you, okay, let me tell you what. Okay. I have a question. Right. Oh. So are you saying that you, you're going to prohibit all the medians throughout the city or just on King's Highway? No, uh, all of them. And, and why? I, let me tell you why I included that is because it is a safety issue. It really should not have been an exception I anyway. I agree with you. I would okay. like to take Riverview Media down. Right. I can't go to 27. No, you're right. No, I'm like with you. Right. Let's no, it's for all of them. No, I'm okay with that. <laughs> and then have a median. I, I agree okay. that the licenses that they get, and I know when they apply, they're given a map of the vending districts. They ignore that. <laughs> they have the thing around the neck, and when, the, when you call the police, mm -hmm. the police say, well, they got a vending license. They don't know. So you have to continue to read up with each captain. The problem is, is that the license collector's office also kind of needs to come out and express it too. This weekend is going to be a circus yep. on this on the circle. Yep. You're going to have every Valentine Day vendor oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 out there. I'll be there to give me some. My stores have a Those pit money. because yeah. these folks yeah. are yeah. allowed to come. It's not fair. They no. ran off by the police by once, but then they come right back and they don't care. Yep. And I really think that we should look into businesses that allow these vendors to, to put on out. their property to have right. some stipulation to the occupancy permit or their business license. I'm they allow this that thing. Because they're allowing to, they're taking mm -hmm. money from the vendor. To allow them to do this, and I don't think that's right. If, if we're going to if we're going to patrol the sidewalks and the streets and city property, I think these businesses should be held accountable for allowing these folks to set up. No, I'm just um, the other thing that I have a I question about would. is these cell phone <laughs> companies, these government Ooh, companies. in the phones. tents. Mm. They don't have to get licenses. You know, they're so-called regulated by the state, or they don't they don't have anything to present. No, they supposed to. So I'm to. calling the police on them. But there's really no enforcement because I don't have any guideline from the license collector's office. I would like for you all to somehow see how you can regulate Include them too. That. Because I got the government phones mm -hmm. set up right next to the cell phone companies. It's not it's not fair. You These right. folks are paying taxes, yeah. property taxes, business license, yeah. occupancy permit, but the cell phone place can just come up anytime they want. The circle is prime spot for everyone. It's been hard to run off all the barbecue plea people and all those folks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's bad. What can I do about the phone? So I think it's something we should look into. And right. that's why I wanted to know is this the actual bill that the old woman is going to amend? And I can or amend is there it. another one that we really need to make sure we include we that? Because it's, oh. a, it's a major problem. Right. And it should be on the license. Can so we the include the phone? That this is not a vending district. And mm -hmm. whatever they got around their neck is not permitted in that mm -hmm. area. So we're gonna have we're gonna fix it where they'll have the vending district. You know, what it works. Do you need? Oh, you got ten minutes left. He's got, he's got to get out of here. Go ahead. Oh, but in other words, when they wear these things around their neck, it's gonna indicate where the, what where they're supposed to be, not just bland. So I have a vending license. They know, well, you're not supposed to be here. Right. So when they see the vending license, they think, well, they got a license. No, mm -hmm. they're vending districts. And it's okay. downtown, and that's, I think, Soulard might have one or whatever, but it's not I don't have one. Ward. Right. I, I, <laughs> so I, I have no problem holding this because I want it to be the best it can be. In fact, while she was talking, I forgot to put LRA lots because I was going to include that in there. Thank so God. I will hold this. Okay. If people have, and I will get the uh, corrected version, so I'm sorry because I didn't mean to alarm anybody. And then I'm going to add LRA, LRA lots. And I'm also on you with you about the cell phones because right. I run them off under my vending thing. Okay. Um, and so if anybody has other uh, suggestions, and I'm just saying I'm open and I will, we we can work on this. Okay. When the Alderman Clark, when I, and, and and so my question is because the cell phone, the cell phone vendors, um, they are a major problem. But mm -hmm. I was under uh, the impression. impression that. Um, that the license collector office does does regulate them because I called because I had like three of them set, set up 
on uh, West Florence in between Riverview and Goodfellow. And they came out, and you guys came out, and they came and they and they told them to leave. They shut the guys down and took pictures of something, and, and the guys left. Now, they came back, mm. um, but I think they came back in your ward. They came back on the circuit. <laughs> <laughs> they came back down to my ward, too. They're on South Jefferson, South Broadway. Yeah, yeah absolutely. They don't produce it. Yeah. Because they don't so, uh, so can we, do we regulate them? Because I know that Sam came out and moved them. Right, we do. And actually, we coordinate with the St. Louis Police Department. Okay. We work with the Wait a minute, John stop. stop, stop. Can you say who you are oh, with sorry. the license collector? Sure. I'm Aaron Phillips. I'm the chief of staff of license collector's office. But uh, our office does coordinate efforts with the St. Louis Police Department. Uh, we, we speak frequently with John McLaughlin. And uh, we, he, 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 we, uh, once we get a call, in reference to where they're located, just like we did in your war. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go out with the police and, and shut those uh, individuals down. If they come back again, just, just give us a call again because we have our field service operators and uh, uh, representatives that do that. Let me ask Aaron a question. Would it be a, is it a problem, Aaron, for us to put on there where they are allowed to vent? Would that be a I don't think that would be a problem. It's something I have to discuss certainly with the And what the about uh, posting? where it's not allowed, like especially where we're having big problems and you're not the street department. What about, <coughs> do mm -hmm. you think all, if just for this committee, about posting, no vending allowed here? Okay, so that's just a suggestion. I'm tired of the bomb pop man. Okay. He's got it. One quick question. When we do call a complaint, I call the license collector's office which is not real time. Yeah. So what do, when we call the license collector office, who is the person we need to talk to about it? Because uh, on the weekends, there's nobody to go out. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. So you just call the police. Right. And the police get frustrated, and they're like, I don't want to keep doing this. So what do we do about the weekends? If I was going to call our, our license collector and say, someone really needs to patrol the circle, because it's going to be Friday, tomorrow, Saturday, Saturday. and Sunday. Yeah. That is something that we can That is something that we well, can see, what you need to do is request the license collector to have somebody to come out there on those days. Well, that's what I'm going to do. And those hours. Can, you can't. If I can speak, uh, well, you can do a resolution and send it down that to them, okay. and then they then will have automatic requests to come and look. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, we're going to change this video he wants to in speak. five minutes. We have five minutes. You know what? I'd love to change. Aaron Phillips from the got anything to talk about? Mr. Phillips from the yeah, license office. He was trying to respond. Excuse me. Oh, honey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, yeah, I mean, and, and as uh, Alderman uh, Tyus mentioned, I had a bunch of questions. Uh, one of the questions I had was, you know, with regards to all the other ordinances, I have only had a chance to look at them in a cursory manner, but there's so many being repealed here. I want to make sure that we're not repealing. I mean, there's just a lot to digest there. Um, one thing that struck out to me, I know that this is currently the way we do it, but we offer the graduated business licenses from June uh, to the following May 31st of every year, and the schedule for these are January to January. There's, it just seems like an odd disconnect there. Wait, so are you asking that maybe we uh, make them at the same time? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming if you get a business if you get a vending license, you also have to have a business license, and we, so we might as well make those schedules. I, I, maybe it's disruptive for people who currently have vending. I don't really know. It was just something that struck out to me. Uh, a couple of other th uh, areas of note, uh, the employee ind identification w that every single employee of a vendor needs to have an identification mm -hmm. and applied for one under the business license. Is that currently the way we do it? Yes. Okay. Um, do we currently require insurance that's noted here? That was a question we didn't have answered. Uh, they've got to have that before they can get a license. Is that the, is that the current uh, insurance? What I don't want to do is disrupt anything that we're doing You're in a vending sense. Yeah. No. Because there's been some discrepancy you know, with the districts. I mean, the Merrimack district is no longer a vending district in any way, shape, or form. And for me, folks in my ward at, along Cherokee Street and along South Broadway and Jefferson have expressed interest in being able to vend, to being able to have food trucks, to being able to do some of that, you know, where you have vendors set up more than, less than 150 feet from one another in a, in a, on a weekend sense without having to go and apply for a festival. And so if we're moving forward with changing vending, I would like to have host community meetings in my community to decide how we're going to move forward with vending in the 24 because um, it's been uh, a consistent area of um, potential 
growth, business growth in, 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 the, in the business district there. And I know it presents a lot of problems. We do have a lot of problems with these cell phone places and other people. Um, but I'd like, uh, on the other side, I'd like to be able to encourage and facilitate vending um, in some instances where people really want it. And I don't want to be overly restrictive of it. With the stipulation of 150 feet from one another, right? I, d I don't particularly like that. And I'll tell you why. You know, when I, you go to New York City, you go other places, you know, you'll have food trucks right next to each other. Um, and it's a good thing, and and it provides a, a, you know a walkable you know uh, vending small vending district uh, for special occasions, which I think could be a good thing in in some situations. What about the businesses already there that's similar? To yeah, so food? I have a unique situation in that the business district is very in, that I represent is very supportive of of vending and food trucks, particularly because it draws people to the business district to spend money in their stores and to buy alcohol or whatever else they may be. So I, I, have, I know I have a unique situation in this particular regard, and I just want to be uh, open to uh, allowing you know, the wishes of that particular business district to, 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 to fit within whatever so we have. So I'm selling hot dogs and, oh, oh, and oh, hot dogs. to interrupt, but yeah. we have to yeah. change the tape to be able to continue to keep this a public meeting. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, can we, can we break for two minutes for a minute? Yeah, I surrender. <laughs> a few seconds. Yeah, it takes a lot. We're going to need another tape yeah. because of the, the other suggestion bill anyway. suggestion is that you get that air and, and exempt it out. Yeah, you yeah. if you want to change yeah. Yeah. So, that yeah. way. You know, and I you can just, do that. You can give your boundaries. You exempt this out of this, okay? Mm -hmm. And then if you come back later and yeah. you decide you want some different things, but just for now, that part is exempted out of you because you don't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's going to be a little bit tricky because she wants some people. I want. I want to be able to be restrictive for you for have your restrictions. Yeah, I'm selling hot dogs and a hot dog yeah. truck pull up outside. I got a unique situation because my business district really you, wants to is, see more vending. She really is. You <laughs> but <laughs> so I don't want to disrupt what you want. Address, right? I want an exemption. Yeah. It's far. Oh, 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 yeah. No. Yes, I'm sure it does. Yes, it does. It says. Okay. It does. It says, okay. It so does. Back at the meeting. And so it's and so. <laughs> yeah. The rules. I just I think I don't I don't want to see this ram. I, I would like to see a uh, long you know. And then suppose I, I can I can uh, amend it as the older women uh, mentioned, but um, you know, I was just bringing up my concerns. I'd like to have you know an exemption put in potentially, but after some community input from from my ward. And so what I have suggested to her is that if she draws an area that since we're coming back anyway, of where you have some concerns, that we'll just exempt that out from now so that it won't apply to whatever areas. And then if you want to come back later after you've had community meetings, because I need this in place in a hurry, especially as it relates to Kings Highway and okay. the medians and things like that. That way it preserves what you want and it exempts all, you know, exempts it out and you allow vending. Okay. If, if we're not going to change the current vending for the most part citywide, I'm fine with leaving it and then just coming back and uh, maybe, you know, moving forward. I just, some of the things were very confusing to me with whether or not this was in line with what we're currently doing and if we're changing anything. Well, and that's so, why people created vending right. districts um, so that they could exempt out and have different things, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. So you, if you might want a vending district and you may allow in your vending district for them to be right yep. next to each other, for there to be more than, um, sure. right, okay. okay. If there are no other questions, then Sam's not providing lunch for us. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Well, you might want to continue to meet. <laughs> Sam said continue to meet. At least a five. He owes me. Yeah, I got one more bill. One more bill. Uh -oh. uh, yes. Well, you owe me uh, a lunch from your election you haven't given me. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chairman, members of the committee. Um, board Bill 279 is relatively straightforward. Um, it is a board bill to restrict semi-truck trailer uh, trucks and trailers on Russell between 7th Street and Gravoy. I provided a map highlighting the area. Um, all of Soulard is essentially already, we prohibit uh, semi trucks on the on the residential streets. Russell, for some reason, does not uh, currently do that. Lately, and I think it is a result of construction that happened last summer. The truck drivers, because we have we're talking hundreds of semi trucks a day coming from the industrial area uh, east of Russell, of Seventh Street, um, cutting through on Russell to get to the interstate, as opposed to going to Marion or south or, or north to Shoto or south to Arsenal 
that you use the, utilize the highways, the interstate ramps. They're cutting across Russell. Uh, I finally figured out why they're trying to avoid commercial vehicle enforcement. Mm -hmm. uh, the police department's commercial vehicle enforcement generally sits either north or south of Russell. So if they take Russell, they avoid those guys and they don't get stopped and have their loads checked and their safety books, lo logs and everything. Um, they're also shaking the buildings. It's a, it's a mess. Uh, I've got support of the businesses there uh, and the residents. Um, and the traffic commissioner's weighed in and she's in support. I've also spoken with the police department's commercial vehicle unit and they are in full support of this. Are there specific business trucks? Oh, yes, I'm so, I should have area? mentioned. Yes, so they are exempted. So if you are loading or unloading yeah. in the district, oh. you can still use the street. Sure. So if you're coming to Hammerstone's or Johnny's or any of the bars in the neighborhood, yeah. even in a semi, you're still welcome. Come on in. We want you to drop off that Budweiser beer uh, for those bars. But if you are just cutting through, mm -hmm. you're not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. Question for you. Yes. Is there some reason why we can't put some flyers out there or somebody in your neighborhood group pass them out in advance because unless they get a ticket they're not going to know. So my plan once this is in effect I've already spoken with commercial vehicle enforcement they are going to focus their efforts on this stretch once it goes into effect. Oh, okay. The primarily primary truck companies that are doing this are Anheuser-Busch, because uh, they have a natural gas facility <laughs> down here, um, <laughs> Yellow Transportation, and a, and a couple of others. And so I will personally, I plan on reaching out. I've already informed them that I'm planning on doing this, but I will send them another letter advising them to advise their drivers to stay off of Russell. Yeah, I think it's great. Well, it's oh, in your ward. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. I have a question uh, for you all. Uh, so, because um, I have a similar problem in one of my streets, how do you, how do you plan to enforce it? Commercial vehicle enforcement will enforce it. I mean, really? they're there every day anyway. Are so, they really? Okay. Yeah, and I mean, really, so so the, the since there's so much truck traffic in this area, and the police department has a federal grant that allows you don't even need any reason to stop a commercial truck mm -hmm. from from driving. You can just stop them to check their safety logs, oh. to check their loads, okay. and all those other things. So if trucks are coming up and down Russell, they plan on stopping them. I don't want everyone ticketed initially. Just advise them to st to cut it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Um, in the third <coughs> sentence, um, uh, it's re really the third line, it says an ordinance, uh, let's see, prohibiting such traffic during certain hours along Russell Boulevard. So you're not just prohibiting it. No, that actually, that's a, mis that's a typo. I apologize. Um, prohibiting such traffic. It should not along, say during certain hours. Yes. Right. Right. Certain so hours. if we could maybe do a friendly amendment. Uh, if you'd be willing to offer it. Uh, okay, uh, you know, yeah, but I... Yeah. I okay. Thank you for catching that. <laughs> okay, because I thought you were only going to do it doing like traffic or rush hours. And no. So, okay, so then my, and maybe I didn't hear this, so we, that's fine, we can cross out during certain hours and we will do that. My question is, uh, so where do the trucks go now? Will they go to Lafayette or? No, they'll, well, so they, they'll go where they're where initially, oh, they're supposed okay. to go, which is there's an entrance ramp to the interstate at Marion, uh, which is sort of just off the map, I apologize. If you're on 7th, you go to Marion, just north of Soulard Market, there's an entrance ramp okay. to get on the interstate. Or they can proceed to Shoto, which is where there's entrance ramps to everything, essentially. Or they go south to Arsenal, which also has entrance okay. ramps and exit ramps. So I'm just going to tell you this, and you can take it for what it's worth, okay? <laughs> Um, you said you had uh, had you already engaged in some kind of a conversation with Anheuser Busch. I have. What are they called? In, whatever they call. I've, sp I've spoken to the businesses impacted uh, by this. And, and no one has any real problems. They I mean, did. Okay. Yeah. The majority okay. of their drivers are already in compliance and not using this street as a cut through. Just some are in an effort I know, to right. evade. And Russell's right. a beautiful street too. Right. Um, and it's wide. And I don't. Okay. I was just going to say, if you haven't, I would suggest because. When Anheuser Bush really wants mm -hmm. to reach out and touch, they right. will. Okay, mm -hmm. so as long as you're good with that, <laughs> I'm good. Do you have a neighborhood group that would put flyers out for a couple of weeks before this goes into effect? I, really, what I will do is I will personally reach out to the businesses that that are currently, you know, the the biggest violators. It's not really an issue amongst the neighborhood because the the truck drivers don't live in the neighborhood and they don't park in the neighborhood. Um, so there's really no need to fly, but I will make sure that all of the um, businesses are notified of this change. Okay, I have another question. So now, and but if you were making a delivery, then you would allow them to come at any time. Oh yes, yeah. at any time. Yes. Okay. okay. 
And I apologize. I should have taken out during certain no, hours. No, no, I, we, I, we can do that. Yeah. No, we can do that. That's not a big thing. I just want to make certain because some, I know along some work roadways they don't let the semis like doing rush hour or do it. They don't let them do it because right. they and especially deliveries because on King's Highway we don't let them do deliveries in certain spots because they back up the traffic right. doing so mm -hmm. between uh, four and six or seven or whatever like that mm -hmm. we don't let them so. Um, um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to offer a, just a friendly amendment to mm -hmm. cross out during certain hours. Um, Second. Okay. Second. <laughs> That's a good role. idea. <laughs> There's a motion for the previous role to accept that amendment. Well, I would accept it. Yeah, okay. that'd be great. Have Thank you for uh, catching that. Have we got a second, Tim? Yes. yes. Yeah. Previous role. Oh, well. We request for the previous role. If there are no objections to the previous role, then it's out. Okay, no, no, don't don't we have to after we amend it? Now we have to do another well, one. So so I need to introduce the no, as amendment. No, 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 no. We just we're just gonna do I move yes. to uh board to, board to, <laughs> thank you. For board bill two seventy nine as as friendly amended. So and previous role. Oh, there you go. There you go. If there are no other questions, <laughs> Okay. Thank you. If anybody has any suggestions, I'll get you guys a clean end mark. But if Thanks. you got suggestions about.